Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi kepada Profesor, Doktor, hadirin, tuan-tuan dan puan Terima kasih kerana menghadirkan diri ke siri webinar pada pagi ini Sementara kita menunggu panel untuk masuk ke dalam siri webinar ini Saya menjemput anda semua untuk berkongsikan webinar ini kepada rakan-rakan anda yang belum lagi mengetahui Uh, program ini okay, masih boleh uh, sempat untuk kita share sementara kita tunggu panel kita masuk uh, untuk uh, untuk start uh, kita punya webinar dan uh, sekiranya yang uh, ada yang belum lagi menukar uh, visual background yang disediakan oleh pihak penganjur anda boleh berbuat demikian okay, pautan disediakan di ruangan chat dan kita juga ada sediakan uh, pautan kehadiran anda boleh mengisi pautan kehadiran sementara menunggu uh, panel uh, masuk ke dalam uh, Webex ini. Terima kasih.
Assalamualaikum selamat pagi. Uh, panel kita masih berusaha ya untuk masuk ke dalam siri Webex ini. Uh, saya mohon uh, untuk puan-puan untuk uh, menunggu sekejap saja lagi kita uh, nantikan uh, ketibaan kita punya ni panel untuk masuk ke dalam Webex ni. Saya rasa mungkin dia ada sedikit masalah teknikal. Jadi kita akan bermula sedikit lewat. Uh, dan saya berharap anda semua dapat setia bersama hingga ke akhir uh, siri ini. Dan sekiranya ada yang belum lagi menukar virtual background, anda boleh berbuat demikian dengan uh, menukar uh, virtual tersebut yang telah disediakan di pautan di uh, chat. Dan juga uh, pautan kehadiran juga ada disediakan di ruangan chat bagi yang belum mengisi kehadiran. Okey, uh, bagi... Yang belum lagi mengetahui akan program ini, okay, rakan-rakan sekalian boleh share dengan rakan-rakan sementara uh, program ini uh, belum di, dimulakan. Okay, sempat lagi untuk anda share kepada rakan-rakan anda. Dan okay, kita tunggu lakukan sedikit sahaja masa lagi uh, untuk Dr. Hanudin masuk ke dalam uh, web ini. Terima kasih.
Okey, baiklah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Dr. Hanudin ada di talian sekarang ini? Uh, ya, ada Nira ni. Sorry lah tadi tu banyak kanu teka-teki. <laughs> Jadi okay, okay. baru kebaikan sekarang. Iyalah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okey, okay, panel kita pun sudah ada pada pagi ini. So kita boleh mulalah kan. Okey, Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum. Sekali lagi diucapkan kepada uh, Profesor Dr. Uh, Tuan-tuan dan perempuan, uh, saudara-saudari yang dihormati sekalian, terima kasih kerana menghadirkan diri ke siri webinar tips penulisan dan penerbitan artikel berimpak tinggi pada uh, untuk bidang sains sosial. Uh, saya sekali lagi mengucapkan uh, berbanyak-banyak terima kasih atas kehadiran dan juga uh, sedikit menunggu uh, agak lama tapi saya percaya anda semua uh, setia menanti untuk mengetahui ya, apa tips yang akan disampaikan oleh oleh doktor uh, yang akan uh, membet, apa ni berkongsi ya dengan kita uh, dengan lebih uh, dalam. Dan uh, untuk makluman hari ini sekalian, program ini adalah program uh, di bawah uh, program Cintai Ilmu okay, bagi tahun 2022. Dan uh, sebelum kita meneruskan, uh, saya mengharapkan anda semua untuk memastikan peranti sentiasa berada dalam keadaan mute ya, bagi melancarkan lagi perjalanan majlis. Dan uh, mohon bagi yang belum menukar virtual background, boleh ber berbuat mungkian. Uh, pautan disediakan di ruangan chat. Kita akan gunakan nanti untuk sesi bergambar ber beramai-ramai. Dan pengesan kehadiran juga uh, anda boleh isi di ruangan chat yang disediakan. Okey, dan saya rasa uh, itu sahaja. Tapi sebelum kita mula, mari kita persilakan uh, Encik Safudin Darun untuk membacakan doa. Kita silakan Encik. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Al-Mursalim. 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 Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Sesungguhnya pada pagi ini kami berkumpul dalam majlis bengkel penulisan penerbitan artikel hanya keranamu Ya Allah. Kami berkumpul untuk menimba ilmu, bertukar pendapat, menyumbangkan buah fikiran, menghubungkan silaturahim dan memberi sokongan ke arah meningkatkan lagi prestasi jabatan kami. Ya Allah, Ya Tarjana, Ya Walikram. Sesungguhnya hanya kepadamu kami rafakan rasa syukur. Hanya kepadamu kami menyembah dan hanya kepadamu kami memohon pertolongan. Maka engkau berkati dan lancarkanlah majlis kami ini, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Aziz, kami mohon kekuatan dan dari hadratmu, Ya Allah, supaya kami yang hadir pada hari ini dapat melaksanakan segala kebaikan. Kurniakanlah kepada kami kekayaan ilmu pengetahuan dan hiasilah diri kami dengan sifat-sifat yang maha lembut. Muliakanlah kami dengan ketakwaan. Ya Allah, engkau punya segala dosa-dosa kedua ibu bapa kami, pada guru-guru kami dan saudara-saudara kami serta sekalian umat di alam ini ya Allah kurniakanlah kepada kami dengan nikmat kesihatan Rabbis rahli sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanah wa fil akhirati hasanah wa qina adab an-nar subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Amin, amin, rabbal alamin. Kita harapkan perkongsian uh, pada pagi ini akan mendapat rahmat di sisi Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Sebelum uh, saya mulakan, sebelum saya berikan ya pas, okay, uh, saya sini kepada panel kita. Izinkan saya untuk membacakan sedikit latar belakang beliau ya, boleh? Okay, uh, Dr. Hanudin Amin is an associate professor at the Labuan Faculty of International Finance, University Malaysia Sabah, Labuan International Campus. He is a certified Islamic banker, CIB, possessor COFSA, certificate, Bachelor of International and Offshore Banking from University Malaysia Sabah, and Master of Business Administration, MBA in Islamic Banking and Finance, from International Islamic University Malaysia, IIUM. He earned his PhD in 2015 in the area of Islamic home financing from, um, from uh, IIUM, Institute of Islamic Banking and Finance, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. He is the recipient of Best Peer Review, Review uh, 2019 problems and also the recipients of the Malaysia Research Star Award 2018. Um, prominent uh, topic in research, Islamic finance, Islamic banking and financial products, Malaysia. 
uh, considered in the Stanford University list of the world top 2% scientists in business and management throughout the single year 2019. He is also the recipient of the Outstanding Reviewer 2020 by Emerald, awarded by Emerald Publishing Limited UK. He introduced a framework capturing the Islamic theory of consumer behavior and published the idea in Journal of Asia Business Studies, Scopus and ECSI in 2019. He has published more than 100 academic articles using SPSS, AMOS and PLS in prestigious journals such as Management Research Review, International Journal of Banking Marketing and Research Internet Research among others. So um, without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Hanudin Amin. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Sister Munira, for a very uh, brief and also precise introductions. Kadang kala meremang bulu bila ada rungkaian berkenaan dengan diri dalam konteks uh, perbahasan dan juga pengenalan. Apa-apa pun terima kasih banyak atas jemputan yang diberikan dan minta ampunlah seketika tadi disebabkan ada masalah teknikal. Uh, tiga kali saya restart komputer baru dapat akses internet. Nah, biasalah bah, panggilan pulau. So anyway, uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining me today online. It is a very a good, brilliant effort that the uh, library, uh, Perpustakaan UMS, is organizing this uh, very brilliant sharing. I do believe what I have uh, captured throughout my own particular journey as academicians, not that much, but uh, I'm trying to tell you the truth behind of the uh, ingredient or why or in what way that we can uh, get published in some of the particular high impact journal. So thank you for that, uh, everyone. And also thank you uh, mainly to the organizer here, Perpustakaan University Malaysia Sabah. So without further ado, Okay, let me begin with uh, this kind of particular slide, the central turbans. Okay, I will be make it a little bit big here. Okay, for today' uh, uh, session, as you can see here, we will be looking at uh, some tips uh, for writing and publication in high impact journal. I believe that everyone familiar with uh, the definitions of a high impact journal. But in our contemporary uh, civilizations of thought, we are looking and try to refer this uh, high MPA journal by considering the WOS. Uh, and in a, in a way that we are looking at SCI and also SCCI. But when it comes to our discipline here, ladies and gentlemen, we are only considering SSCI. But I don't worry that much. This is a kind of the the knowledge for recording and also for enrolling our own particular research and to be documented properly. I always believe, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when we are talking about the publishing here, the work that we are publishing, right, will be, uh, I mean, last long to believe in this world. The person that will be passing by will be uh, myself and also the rest of us. The world is just like a very, very, temporary for, for us. So as one of the particular ingredients that I believe that I can consider as a heritage here is basically by publishing my, my some of the particular research in the forms of journal article, as well as in the forms of book. And I thank you for that, for Penerbit UMS uh, throughout my own particular journey, beginning 2003 up to 2022, the support is basically very brilliant, about 19 years here, and I believe uh, that particular support still considered the best uh, as compared to the other particular institutions. So as my name here, I am, uh, my name Hanudin Amin from Labuan Faculty of International Finance. So we try to kick off by looking at uh, definitions of high impact journal. So people will be looking at Scopus, yeah, on the other hand. But more importantly here, 
the very true exact definitions of a high impact journal is related to this one the one that i'm considering uh, on your screen here on my screen a journal uh, is considered to have a high impact if its publications are often cited across the academic discipline a comma in particular if they are also cited in other high impact journals so in our context here, not that very much when it comes to the social science. We have still a very limited scope of the WOS as compared to the pure science engineering and best here at the medical point of view. Also, they are growing in terms of their participation in the uh, Scopus Index Journal. Uh, mainly when today a little bit uh, a strategy uh, to be highlighted right by inviting the international conference uh, doing some sort of the collaboration with the international conference and uh, that particular international conference is indexed by scopus so because of that you can find right uh, there is a growing trend of the published scopus index journal by some of the faculty at ums but the best part here and we have some sort of a very good opportunity just try to get through in the first place a general article so we can target at the very bottom line and then can can also move step by step from one particular ladder to another so but the process here will be taking some sort of a very good consideration of time that's why i always believe when it comes to the writing we don't have any proper timing in my case, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I normally will be using my midnight. I and to be approved as a senior lecturer in 2009. But during the particular four years, I maximized the time, but today no longer. <laughs> just try to make it in a proper uh, moderated way. Just try to ensure we can consider our uh, health is considered as a priority uh, in the first place. So we can finish this, can finish if we have already died the world. Allah, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see here, right, I coming up with this two barrel I kind of uh, I extracted from uh, the uh, PowerPoint presentation uh, PP uh, the Microsoft uh, PowerPoint right so and more detail here when we are talking about high impact journal basically it's about integration from one journal article to another so as you can see here right article from journal a the, the first barrel here are cited by article from journal b and on the other hand article from journal b are cited by article from journal a this will be defined as high impact but in our current situation this high impact should be defined in the context of wos because one and only generating the high impact uh, factor and to be used by many university in order to decide at best the promotion as well as the performance appraisal like in the case of university malaya as well as university putra malaysia but for time being this kind of uh, practice ladies and gentlemen is a little bit growing at ums due to the pack of uh, the the changes in terms about the uh, philosophical thought regarding about publication regarding about the qs ranking whatsoever but i believe we do according to our capacity because in uh, generating uh, the published uh, uh, general article it takes sometimes i have an experience that i have to wait at least about uh, three years and also there will be experience uh, was come to us about four years in order to ensure the article to be published uh, so uh, in our 
importantly, uh, the, the high impact journal here will be uh, related to the integration uh, among the index uh, uh, journal article from one to another. In our particular matter here, we will be looking at Scopus uh, database. So probably I can uh, show you right a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, regarding about uh, some sort of the agenda here. Doctor? Yeah. Would you like to take Dalam. off your, your mask? Oh yeah, oh your mask. Nah, to terbiasa sudah nih. Okay. Okay, as long as you are comfortable with. Okay, right. Yeah, mau mau jadi ninja bukan nih? Okay, doctor. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, let me try to show you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, regarding about the easy proxy uh, from UMS, right? Uh, just uh, try to uh, stop the sharing here a little bit. I'm going to share with this, uh, yeah, this one. Okay, that's the second of sharing. Uh, sorry lah, saya pakai mask ni macam terbiasa sudah. Itulah COVID punya cerita. Okay, as you can see here, right, this is... Um, subscribed by the UMS uh, library, Pokustakan UMS. So I just try to share with you how do we try to read this Corpus database. In the first place, what we can do, we go directly by login to UMS e resources access. And very, very sophisticated, ladies and gentlemen. For me, it is one of the best uh, database available in Malaysia, one of the best. Huh? So, saya, kenapa saya cakap macam ni? Sebab selalu saya pakai. Jadi, <laughs> saya tahu kebergunaan uh, the thing, right? So, as you can see here, I just try to sc scroll down, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And you can find out there will be a number of subscribe database offered by Papustakaan Universiti Malaysia Sabah. So, you can have uh, from the digital FKI will be utilizing this one. There will be a number of it in clinic, including clinical skill here related to the medi medical faculty. Uh, the one that I always be considering very much is about the mirror inside here. But then what I try to highlight, ladies and gentlemen, is related to Scopus. Okay, what you can define here, how try to understand what does it mean by Scopus, it is uh, basically a database uh, that tell you about the numbers of publication, that tell you uh, regarding about the numbers of citation. Two things for sure, uh, how many publication, and how many citation. So just try to click on the particular hyperlink and then you can find out that this is uh, directly uh, will be uh, providing you uh, for the information regarding about the publication available. Okay, so for example, in this case, right, what we can do, just go to uh, the appellation here or you can find out the name of yours, right? For example, uh, yeah, it's not my name, but somebody, for example, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I will be see, I think, for example. Uh, but yeah, OBC is not available. Just try to consider appellation from the university perspective. University Malaysia Tabo. So I can find out, right? It will be uh, provided in here. And just try to uh, click the link. And then after all, you can find out that uh, the application detail will be providing you a proper description description regarding about document uh, available for the institution for UMS up to 2022, uh, 30 June, as you can see here. It's about 7,000. 750 documents. Banyaklah kalau nak di print dan disimpan dekat library memang ada kesulitan dari segi pengurusan dan sebagainya. But Alhamdulillah today we have this uh, e-book and also e-journal. And then you can find out that the author here, right? And then there will be some sort of uh, division regarding about uh, the contribution made by the discipline by the author of UMS. For example, in my discipline, for instance, right, uh, it is related to economy, econometric and finance. And at the same time also regarding about our discipline, still related to business management accounting, related also arts and humanity. 
everything right but some of the individual uh, they're considering the uh, social sciences and some of the individual they're very very uh, uh clever in integrating the idea to get published for example right for example i'm from social science then i want to measure regarding about the people accepting regarding about the different types of uh, vaccine uh, in the world basically to be qualified right the first and only to be considered very effective accordingly is pfizer and then we have uh, the subsequent so on and so forth so i can do the research by doing this integration collaboration with somebody from medical and the introductions regarding about the vaccines that to be written down by the person and then when it comes to the literature as well as the method then it is my own responsibility so it can be done ladies and gentlemen people today are a little bit uh, clever right uh, that is why you can find the numbers of uh, growing publication but i always believe uh, the good uh, published work here is by our own hand as about itu yang di di telaah ataupun disuruh oleh Nabi Muhammad SAW. Pekerjaan yang paling baik adalah pekerjaan yang datang daripada tangan sendiri, bukan tangan orang lain. Ada maksud tersirat dan tersurat dalam hadis berkenaan tuan-tuan dan tuan-tuan sekalian. So you can have a look here, right? Uh, and then you just try to click, uh, say for example, uh, this one, right? Just try to click. They will provide you a very uh, detailed description regarding about the publication at ums so as you can see here right uh, there are good things or even this one yeah then there will be a numbers of it uh, many things to be uh, uh promoted ladies and gentlemen so it means that when it come for this corpus yeah it tell you more importantly number one publication number number two citations so say for instance in terms about the citation let me go to uh, this particular link at UMS uh, plus the collaborative plus the corresponding plus the uh, co-author, right? And totaling amounting about 2,840. Just try to uh, click this particular link, right? You know, to view uh, all author at um, UMS. And then you can find that, right? Uh, at UMS, uh, basically, everything is controlled in terms of the publication citation controlled by somebody from science uh, it can be from pure science it can be from uh, engineering it can be also from the uh, computing uh, informatics on and so forth so as you can see here right <laughs> uh, more importantly ladies and gentlemen and then along with the line also you can uh, refer everything here from a to z right so this uh, all of our brain uh, they are doing well in terms of what generating but the first 20 here as you can see to be controlled by somebody beyond our discipline uh, they are not from the social science so our particular effort here we just try to complement we are not competing with them we are not competing with them but what we try to do here at best we try to complement uh, in a way that we publish our work so because as you can see here at UMS, everything is controlled uh, from the discipline beyond social sciences. Uh, when I'm talking about social sciences here, including arts, humanity, uh, music, including a banking business, what so and so forth. So, but uh, even in here indicating we're still uh, lagging uh, behind as compared. I mean, the one that we can uh, describe here from uh, the, the science disciplines. So even you can also try to highlight about 200 here, right? Then everything will be a uh, uh, detail off from A to Z. Right, ladies and gentlemen, you can click, for example, uh, yeah, for instance, right? Let me try to click this uh, Prof. Yumat. Uh, Just try to click. Uh, then you can find out that there will be the detailed description regarding about the published article by uh, that professor, as you can see here. Uh, then you can find out right in terms about the number number one in terms about the citation so the citation will be in here say for example you just try to click in here right and you can find out that how many uh article from this the same uh, impact journal or decided this work so as you can see here uh, 
it is ended. So I kind of uh, I kick off a kind of uh, inform information regarding our scopus here, how it can be utilized by many of us, right? So in order to ensure at the end of the day, uh, we can uh, add our own contribution to complement our friends uh, specifying in the area of science. Kita nak menyumbang lah dalam konteks melengkapkan. Kalau nak bersaing memang susah dah. Even uh, this year, I only managed to publish about six uh, Scopus Index. Uh, kerja yang berat dan juga suka sebab dia melibatkan masa, pelaburan masa dan juga melibatkan uh, pelaburan komitmen. Uh, dia ada implikasi lah kadang-kadang bila terlalu banyak fikir ni uh, otak sebelah kanan uh, di hujung ada bunyi dan sebagainya nauzubillah min zalik so anyway uh, just a kind of information here hope that it this will provide us some sort of uh, idea how do we try to contribute to the UMS in the forms of uh, Scopus publication So we go back to our slide here. Okay, and the gentlemen. Okay, why do I need to publish my work? Kenapa sebenarnya kan? Yang pertama tu career advancements. I need to be uh, promoted by the university. I want to become as a senior lecturer. I want to become as a associate professor. I want to become as a Professor C, Professor B, Professor A, for example. So by having this uh, kind of uh, indicator, right, uh, then uh, surely people will be knowing our own existence. Whereas Hanudin, Hanudin is situated in Sabah at UMS. I mean, people are from the other countries, right, mainly from the University of Trisakti, Indonesia, when they try to mention my name, they know that I'm from UMS. A kind of a feeling of a prestige, but not a kind of feeling of proud or real, but uh, it's kind of a contribution that we can make to the ummah in terms about knowledge contribution. But uh, to be frank with all of us here, by having the publication, it's not the only one to measure happiness. It is not the only one that can measure also in terms about our own contributions. Some people, they're contributing about this published article. On the other hand, they are contributing this much. So depending on the particular weightage and depending on the particular evaluation method introduced by the university, if the person is qualified to be promoted, yes, it is, there will be no problem. But the, the point here, we have to look at the contributions. But one of the contribution that can be uh, fulfilled that kind of required a barrel of the evaluation here, ladies and gentlemen, is publication. So one of the publication considered to be a high class, high impact journal. So we need also at least to publish right in our lifeline at UMS, at least one high impact journal will be sufficient. So kalau, kalau meninggal nanti, ang, ang wahu, jadi orang boleh baca apa yang kita tulis. Uh, itu yang keindahan di sebalik penulisan tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian. Uh, sebab orang akademik ni tak akan kaya lah sebenarnya. Melainkan dia buat bisnis. Uh, dia kaya dari segi ilmu. Tapi nak kaya dari segi wang tu, uh, tiada lah. Uh, melainkan kalau dia buat bisnis dan sebagainya. Termasuklah uh, pernah berlaku di Universiti uh, Teknologi Malaysia. Ada seorang pensyarah tu, dia berkelana dalam konteks pasaran saham. Uh, bolehlah untung hari ini, boleh juga rugi hari ini. Uh, itu uh, dalam konteks lah. Tetapi selepas tu ditegur oleh pihak pendaftar agar fokus tu perlu diberi penekanan dalam dunia pengajaran, penyeliaan dan penyelidikan serta penerbitan. So, career advancement and the second one, social obligations. So, the social obligation here, the moment that I discover a new finding regarding about one particular angle of research. Say for instance, when it comes for Ahranuf, uh, dalam konteks penyelidikan yang saya rungkaikan, Ahranu or Islamic pawn shop. So if I have a new discovery regarding about the Tawaruk, for example, regarding about the Kadul Hassan, for example, I have to share that particular knowledge 
with everyone else. Uh, one and only that can be materialized this thing through publication, social obligation, right? So in the end, everyone in my cycle will be able to understand that this is a very good contribution. Then at the end of the day, it will be open a new spectrum of good understanding that will be improving the demand of the product. Consequently, there will be a very good acceptance uh, on aggregate. Okay, thirdly, a uh, global standing uh, through cetacean. And very important, ladies and gentlemen, high impact journal. We can begin by looking at the first one, the first initial step in Malaysia. For instance, we have my site index uh, developed by the KPT Kementerian Pengajian Tinggi uh, because of the influence to have our own particular identity. Kalau nak berpaksikan kepada Scopus, tak semua orang boleh tulis. Dan lazimnya yang ketinggalan sini apabila penulisan itu berkisah dalam konteks penulisan bahasa kebangsaan. Kelazimannya Scopus uh, hanya menerima kelaziman bahasa Inggeris. Walau bagaimanapun ada antara jurnal itu menerima bahasa uh, Melayu ataupun bahasa Malaysia, bahasa kebangsaan. Contoh, Jurnal Pengurusan di Universiti Kebangsaan Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, through the citation, then we can improve uh, helping the institution, helping UMS to improve our QS ranking at best here. And then at the same time also through the citation, this is will be indicating that our work is a goal. Kerja kita yang kita buat ini adalah emas. It's not a uh, silver whatsoever, but at best that our global standing here to be measured on the base of recognition by somebody in our uh, particular cycle of discipline. So the citation uh, increase mean that our work utilized by them and to be implemented in the forms of application plus in the forms of research. Uh, application ni kalau kajian itu dapat menghasilkan satu indikator yang sesuai dalam mengukur indeks dan sebagainya maka boleh diaplikasikan untuk kehidupan seharian ataupun boleh dipanjangkan dalam konteks penyelidikan yang berungkaikan dan berpaksikan negara tersebut. Number four, uh, better networking. Yeah, um, importantly, when we are having a very a continuity in terms about our published uh, general article, then we have a very good networking. People knowing about we are. People know you in, in other countries. For example, I do my part here writing about Islamic banking, but my name is appear in the other countries. For example, in Indonesia, people knowing that, oh, Hanuddin, even the naming is almost resemble like the Indonesian, right? Hanuddin, but the name is not given by parents, but given by the nurse uh, who was uh, born in, in some particular year, uh, uh, at a hospital tapar uh, and uh, the, the name was given by a nurse uh, ada jurawat yang beri nama lah nama saya ada yang berbeza tapi selepas tu jurawat tu beri nama saya Hanudin okay the name will be appear right uh, and this the appearance of the name will be continuously developed by providing a very continuous and constant contribution to the journal uh, published in the high impact journal or even on the other hand, uh, the other particular platform at best. Number five, I register my work. I have research, for example, from A to Z, uh, sponsored by KPT, for example, sponsored by the RMC, uh, the research, research Management Center of University in Malaysia, Sabah. And then if I don't publish those of the particular outcome, right, then it will be become a piece of museum. So everyone will on, cannot be able to access my work, only can be accessed directly through uh, Perpustakaan UMS. But the coverage will be limited. And then who knows one day, right? Uh, Allah, who we don't know, some there will be some sort of fire and whatsoever. And then there will be a chance that our particular research will be disappear. So that is why it's very important to register our work our research outcome in the forms of journal article publications. So the moment that my article is published by that particular journal, ladies and gentlemen, then of course that uh, my effort is uh, recognized and of course that my uh, outcome of the research is registered. Uh, let me try to show you with all of you here, a kind of sharing, right? 
Okay, just stop here. Okay, and then I go here a little bit. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, but let me try to show with you uh, regarding about uh, the, the publications submitted earlier. The journal is, uh, okay, International Journal of, of Ethics. Okay, as you can see here, right, uh, I just try to share with all of you. I have my research output, then I I publish in one of the uh, very good journal. It is not uh, SCCI, but uh, XC, some say, or ECSI, still under the, the, the database of WOS, some say WOS. But in my case, just try to pronounce as WOS. And this journal is a Q1 journal. You can find out in here, right? For example, just try to consider. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you can find that. Uh, uh, under the Schemago. Uh, Schemago is a very independent uh, particular uh, website uh, that will be measuring the quality of uh, the journal indexed by Scopus Elsevier according to the uh, four particular quantiles Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. So as you can see here, right, uh, you can just try to consider the index can be like this, measure on the base of uh, that kind of uh, Scopus database. And then you can find that uh, the, the, the Q1 here indicating about the level of the hierarchy. But that, do not worry that much, ladies and gentlemen. What is important here, we keep on trying, keep on trying in publishing. I still believe in the past uh, when I was joining UMS uh, beginning 2003 and then I don't know what does it mean by being as a tutor, being as a lecturer, right? very difficult to understand because during that time the atmosphere a little bit limited. We are only focusing on the teaching and also learning but not when it comes for the publication. I only materialized the kind of thing the moment that I'm continuing my master degree in 2004, completing in 2005 the the need of having a published uh, journal article and then i love to read mainly the first article that i read the article written by professor dr datuk sudin harun uh, regarding about muslim and muslim pertaining to the islamic banking patronization published by international journal of bank marketing under emira publishing limited united kingdom so uh, let me try to share with you uh, and the outcome here, right, of my uh, research outcome, right, and then uh, becoming to be enrolled to be registered under this particular International Journal of Ethics and System. So when the, the say, for example, right, in the future, there will be war, Nauzbillah bin Zalik, and all of the particular information regarding about my publication here will not be disappear. It will be captured by the database of the Emirate Publishing. They have the system. So if the world is collapsing regarding about the pandemic, one second, Ausbilla, or even regarding about the war whatsoever, right? My publication here still remain in the Emerald database until the end of judgment, until the end of the resurrections. So I kind of think, right, uh, to be highlighted here. So I just uh, share with you, for example, this one. And then you can find out that, uh, yeah. Not, not this one, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, open, open mistake in 2002. Okay, this one. So, as you can see, right, I just try to click this one, Makassid Best Consumer Preference Index. Uh, typically, this topic is for my PhD. But during my enrollment at uh, IIUM, uh, my uh, supervisor was saying to me, Hanudin, you cannot create something new. The new thing is not for you, Hanudin, but you can modify the model. You can modify. You can only develop the new thing the moment that you have completed your PhD. So I just try to put aside this idea and then uh, be focusing on the thing that I'm doing. I'm modifying the theory, including new variables, so on and so forth. We just try to ensure the meaning of the PhD uh, journey here is to, uh, to, to train the individual to become as an independent author, independent researcher. 
Itu tujuan dia lah nak buat baru tu mana ada masa tuan-tuan tiga tahun sahaja nak buat bombastik Allahu. <laughs> tak ada masa. Just try to modify the thing. Uh, the training is there. The people will be able to appreciate the knowledge. But the point here to ensure the individual can be independent. So let me try to uh, click this particular link right for the sharing purposes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, so for example, this one right there. Okay, as you can see here, uh, this uh, particular uh, study is uh, sponsored by the uh, KPT, Ministry of High Education, uh, Mohi, Malaysia. And then as you can see here, FRGS. Okay, before this article uh, received by this journal, right? Then I have submitted this article to a number of outlets, but they were rejected with a very harsh comment, with a very negative comment. Some of the comments were very uh, motivating, uh, stimulating my brain and my thought, right? But I believe it is not the place for this article to live in. So I um, decided during that time to change my own particular direction to submit to the International Journal of Ethics and System. During the time before the editor was resigned, this article review and uh, evaluated at the desk evaluation by Professor Dr. Masudul Alam Choudhury at University Trisakti. Very uh, I mean, world class uh, talents and also scholar in the area of Islamic economics, and the one that introduced a number of uh, good writing regarding about the Tawhidic paradigm. Uh, regarding about uh, one and only above and on the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, ladies and gentlemen. So, so um, it uh, took me about uh, some particular years in order to get this article to get published, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But the point here that I would like to raise, uh, it needs a sort of the perseverance and also determination, PD. Uh, perlu ada uh, ketekunan, uh, perlu ada kegigihan tuan-tuan uh, dan puan-puan sekalian. Dua benda tu lah, perseverance and also determination. Determination uh, uh, zaman, a uh, kind of, uh, but in my case here, I look at this particular PD, perseverance as well as a determination. So uh, with some of the particular effort, I have adjusted then, Alhamdulillah, Allah will, the article get published. So when the article get published, what I do? I just go to the restaurant and having a good chit chat with my friends, uh, even my spouse, right? And just try to share this idea. Uh, it's not easy to get published in any way. But the moment that you have that kind of objective and the goal, a very good visions, uh, Allah, who everything can be materialized, ladies and gentlemen. So, so I kind of sharing here why that we need to publish. More importantly, to be recognized in the area that we are looking at. For example, if you want to, if I want to become a sub professor in the future, I have to be very concentrated in my area. I can still work with my other friend, for example, doing regarding what marketing, tourism, whatsoever, right? But at the end of the day, my majority contribution will be the area that I will be recognized by the world. So I can give a talk regarding about this theory regarding about the Makassid whatsoever, that will be indicating my own sustenance ataupun cara kita macam mana mau cari makan. So we go back here, ladies and gentlemen, so by looking at the why do I need to publish my work, right? And on the other hand, adding to this five reason. Uh, lifetime contribution for application and continuity. Uh, Sekurang-kurangnya lah. Kalau di UMS ni, kalau dapat terbitkan satu high impact pun Allah. Besar sudah tu kejadian dia. Dan amat indah untuk dikongsi dengan rakan-rakan dan sebagainya. Dan tidak mengubah cara kita. Tapi untuk menambah cara kita untuk lebih baik. Tuan-tuan uh, dan puan-puan sekalian. It is not changing uh, myself and we are to become as a monster but now with this publication we can becoming more angelic in terms about our talents in terms about our contributions okay uh, we go further attribute of good paper ladies and gentlemen uh, okay when i'm uh, highlighting this uh, particular criteria or item right 
uh, I have uh, crafted those of the item here based on my experience, based on my experience, and also based on my uh, particular uh, knowledge and critics that I have received uh, throughout my uh, journey as an academician at University of Malaysia Sabah. So the first thing that needs to be considered here to become as a good paper, uh, number one, clear and concise introductions. Kenalah uh, jelas. Dan kalau boleh di sini, uh, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian, it should be done on the basis of in, uh, deductive. Huh? It should be done on the basis of deductive uh, from very uh, broad to the very specific, as you can see here, uh, general uh, to a specific order method. When we are doing our uh, introduction, it should be like that, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Just try to communicate to the reader that we understand what we are doing. We understand that the process of giving a very good knowledge to the editor as well as the, the, the reviewer that we are better uh, when it comes to the publications. So what the paper is about presenting objectively, the theme and risk gap also uh, need to be highlighted. Last but not least, there will be some sort of the structure of the particular uh, article to be called here as organization. And the thing that considered to be familiarized right when it comes for the uh, thesis writing so on and so forth. So there is a significant problem in the written problem uh, drawn from the introduction part. So it should be we have uh, that kind of uh, introduction right just try to chip in uh, the significant problem at least one paragraph at least one paragraph. Cukuplah jangan uh, banyak banyak uh, nanti. Uh, Banyak pula muka surat dia. <laughs> Tapi kena baca lah ulang-ulang kan. Ha, kalau ada kawan lah suruh dia baca. Ha, kawan boleh jadi contributor. Tapi kena menyumbang lah. Bila menyumbang tu. Barulah ada kesepahaman dan juga semangat setia kawan. Okay, number two. Critical, synthesized, evaluated past study. But updated study uh, derived from appropriate journal or book. Uh, and consider some work from the journal we submit in other leading journal. Kalau nak terbitkan artikel, we have to know better regarding about the outlet, ladies and gentlemen. We know better about the uh, particular discipline, uh, the scope in which the journal to be given a consideration here. Okay, for this purpose, let me try to show with you uh, uh, one of the very good thing, right, uh, regarding about Okay, this yeah. is a kind of uh, extra additional point of view. Okay, you can go here, ladies and gentlemen, Skimago. Right, just try to go here, just uh, Google uh, by performing this uh, searching, typing uh, the necessary wording, Skimago, some say, some say Simago. <laughs> Regardless about the pronunciation, right? Just try to uh, click and then uh, press the enter button, uh, something like this. And then you can find out this is a very, uh, I mean, uh, visible uh, URL regarding about Skimago. So what you can do, just try to familiarize yourself with this uh, general article, right? Just try to go to the general ranking here in the first place, in the same gentleman. And then you can find there will be some sort of uh, a heading here. Uh, number one, uh, all subject area. Number two, all subject categories all regions, all type, and also the year uh, related to the publication uh, currently or recently. So what should we do in you know, order to understand what will be the, 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 the journal that we can submit? Okay, say for example, in my case here, I would like to submit regarding about humanity. Humanity, right? And what I can do, uh, just try to uh, click this particular uh, button, a uh, kind of um, all subject area, consider, uh, uh, arts and humanity, ladies and gentlemen, this one, right? Just click on it. And then you go further by looking the second uh, particular column here. Uh, consider, yeah, this one miscellaneous better because uh, it will provide you a number of options, not only limited to one particular angle, but can be the expanded uh, version of it, right? Just try to click on it, something like this. And then you go here for the third one. So what you can do under this particular section, you can limit your own particular searching. Uh, say, for example, by looking at the context of our Malaysia, our country here, 
So we're considering uh, uh, this, uh, yeah, let's click this one, right? And I'll type here, uh, say for example, I'm intended to publish uh, my, my work in this uh, humanity journal. So just try to consider journal only. Memang ada kadang-kadang tuan-tuan dan puan-puan buku kan, tapi uh, tak seronok lah sebab uh, bila kita terbitkan dalam buku ni, biarlah dengan penerbit UMS lebih bagus ataupun penerbit Springgaling whatsoever. But when it comes to the journal here, uh, better to select the best uh, according to all capacity. Uh, kita boleh nak kasih pandai diri, nak kasih tajam minda uh, regarding about the academic acumen. So we can begin by making a number of adjustments to our own particular existence at UMS. Number one, by ensuring that um, the reading is one of the very good culture, reading. Number two, keep on writing. Number three, collaborating. We have a very good uh, potential candidate and also potential good uh, author at the university level. Uh, we just try to give the leeway and everyone will be showing what they have. Everyone come with the advantages uh, and then everyone come with their uh, own particular merits. So just try to consider that one, right, ladies and gentlemen. And then uh, after all, I just try to apply here. So uh, once you have uh, considering, I uh, mean, clicking this apply button, and then you can find that there will be article related, for example, search Malaysia, uh, Global Journal of Takafa, International Journal of Islamic Thought, and Pata, Patanika Journal of Social Science and Humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, right, from A to Z, that our discipline, social science, are limited. But what you can do to make it better, right? Just try to consider the additional plus point by doing the collaboration, by doing this kind of cross-discipline to a certain extent. Okay, I'll tell you one of my experience. Uh, this year, I was uh, evaluated for the FRGS grant at the KPT level. And then uh, the person in charge by Professor Ruslan from University Science Malaysia assigned me at least about 17 uh, proposal, 17 proposal. Semua cantik lah proposal, cuma cara menulis objektif tu banyak yang bukan fundamental tapi lebih kepada kajian tindakan ataupun actions research. FRGS ni dia kajian uh, untuk mencipta yang baharu sekurang-kurangnya yang dijana berpandukan pada kajian kita di peringkat uh, Dr. Pal Sapa. Ladies and gentlemen. So one of the particular proposal I discover better is re related to arts and humanity and how this arts and humanity related to Makassid Asharia. And that particular uh, author is uh, basically a PhD student and then supervised by this at least three uh, uh, professors. Very nice and very, very catchy regarding about the title given and also expressed uh, to me ladies and gentlemen. So I just give a better evaluation and then I suggest a very good recommendation for that particular proposal. So which means on the other hand, we can do this integration. Like at the faculty level, right? Uh, for example, we have faculty of psychology and education. And then you can find there will be a number of theory extended from the psychological part. And even when it comes to the marketing, you can uh, define a number of the theory uh, extended, like in the case of theory of reason actions. So a kind of integration discover cross discipline on the other hand, in our own particular realms of social science. So we can consider, right? Uh, but in Malaysia, at best, we have one, two, three, and four. But you can change the searching here by considering uh, more, uh, looking at the all regions, uh, country here, just try to click something like this. Then you can find out that there will be a numbers of it. Uh, so, but uh, all of uh, the uh, general article here, the general platform, as you can see here, require me and you to write in English. Uh, macam nampak susah kan, tapi tak juga susah tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian. Uh, dewasa ini kita dilengkapkan dengan pelbagai kemudahan yang sebenarnya tidak hadir pada zaman uh, dahulu kala tahun 1980-an tahun 1990-an dan sebelum itu. Tapi dewasa ini kita banyak software, banyak perisian dan banyak kerjasama yang kita boleh rungkaikan. 
Tempoh hari ada saya bekerjasama dengan seorang kawan daripada Universiti uh, Kelantan, Malaysia. Uh, dia buat tesis berkenaan dengan uh, uh, keperluan ataupun kehendak. Uh, keperluan manusia itu adalah bersifat uh, bersifat uh, uh, terhad, tapi kepul- uh, kehendak itu adalah bersifat tidak terhad. Uh, jadi fokus tesis penulisan itu lebih kepada kehendak iaitu uh, berpaksikan pada konsep uh, tasawur uh, tasawur from the islamic thinking so, tapi artikel berkenaan ditulis dalam bahasa kebangsaan jadi apa yang saya uh, buat adalah saya cuba terjemahkan dia dalam bahasa inggeris dan juga asimilasi bahasa yang unik dan juga ampuh supaya penyampaian itu lebih jelas dan juga puitis Uh, itu yang kena lah. Jadi perlu ada juga usaha dalam konteks kolaborasi. Uh, seperti yang banyak dibuat di Universiti Kebangsaan Malaysia. Universiti Kebangsaan Malaysia bahasa pengantar adalah bahasa kebangsaan. Tapi penulisan lebih berpaksikan dalam konteks bahasa Inggeris. Uh, bahasa ini adalah medium dan kita boleh uh, mengubah cara kita. Mengubah dari segi cara penulis, mengubah dari cara pertuturan. Tapi ianya tidak mempengaruhi kita seolah-olah kita seperti orang putih dan sebagainya. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see here, right, and they can make a try also on the other hand by considering some of the particular other countries. We go to uh, our neighboring country, very, very clear for us, right, Bruna, I believe, yes, can be. On the other hand, and the very neighboring country here, uh, we just try to make a try here for Brunei, right? Tapi kalau di Brunei memang tiada lah, tuan-tuan. Uh, kita cuba lah yang paling dekat di Sabah ni, ah, pilih pilih lah. Just go. Uh, directly here, go to the Philippines. Okay. Okay, negara yang paling dekat lah dengan Malaysia di wilayah timur. Okay, just go here, the Philippines here, yeah, right? Then in in Philippines we have this uh, Philippine studies uh, colon historical and ethnographic viewpoints. Uh, ini satu satunya lah, tuan tuan dan pembos kalian. Uh, boleh klik lah kan contoh lah huh? kita klik dan uh, dia indeks ini 10 uh, habis tu uh, dia punya uh, boleh tahan lah Q2 kan <laughs> boleh tahan juga lah kan uh, jadi adalah kebaikan sana ok then you can find out right in here uh, on this particular section on my right here ladies and gentlemen home page how to publish in this journal we just try to click this home page the url and the hyperlink here, then I can uh, go directly to the journal. So what we can do right at the moment that we discover this uh, journal uh, platform, uh, try to familiarize from A to Z. Baca lah kan, macam mana nak familiarize paling cepat, uh, baca lah artikel yang diterbitkan. Huh? Baca artikel yang diterbitkan. Okay, but as you can see here, right, there will be some sort Payment option for subscriptions. Okay, lah, ada lah kan payment tu. So you can find out here in in more detail, right? That there will be some sort of uh, important things are uh, related, and uh, there will be some sort of link. Uh. But uh, more importantly, uh, when we are looking into the journal, right? I, we try to familiarize by reading at least one journal article. At least one journal article baca lah sekurang-kurangnya nak faham artikel tu macam cara saya saya baca tiga kali tapi kalau sentiasa membaca ni itulah when you don't have enough sleep uh, there will be uh, the black cycle in our eyes right uh, but uh, on the other hand a kind of sacrifice at best yeah so of at best uh, all of us familiar with this uh, schema go right uh, more importantly right ladies and gentlemen so, uh, regarding about the, or even you can go here for example uh, by looking at business management and accounting uh, very relevant when it come for two faculty at ums uh, uh, fcal as well as uh, fpep right you can consider uh, for example this one i normally will be picking up this and then considering for example uh, uh, malaysia will be loved country so just try to scroll down find out our country here right uh, something like this and then you can find out so there are uh, numbers of it boleh lah kan uh, tapi yang di sini dia tak masukkan satu lagi journal lah iaitu international journal of business and society 
from University Malaysia Sarawak adalah tu ah, tadi dia termasukkan but you can make a searching ladies and gentlemen by typing in here for example international journal of business and society and then you can find ah, bolehlah kadang-kadang ada maklumat tu yang tak dapat di rekodkan dan sebagainya tapi tetap wujud asalkan jurnal itu adalah scopus dia SGR ni ataupun skimago ni dia memaparkan apa-apa jurnal yang diindeks oleh database ataupun pangkalan data scopus termasuk nilah International Journal of Business Society dari daripada University Malaysia Sarawak so you can find out that the index in 18 and then you can find out that the 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 quality of it right some say q3 uh, tapi janganlah risau dengan qq ni yang penting kita tulis saja dengan izin Allah kita punya sumbangan itu penulisan kita itu yang sebenarnya akan menyumbang kepada pembentukan q, q4 q3 q2 q1 uh, saya tak percaya jurnal tu sendiri tiba-tiba dia ada q1 saya tak percaya tu tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian tapi saya percaya jurnal itu menjadi q1 disebabkan kita because we are the contributor Without our publication, ladies and gentlemen, this Q3, Q4, Q2, Q1 will not be visible. Dan salah satu indikator yang diterapkan dalam penentuan Q3, Q4, Q2, Q1 ni adalah kerjasama antarabangsa. Itu penting. Kerjasama antarabangsa, contoh saya menulis dan saya berasal daripada Malaysia, saya panggil kawan saya yang berasal daripada Indonesia. Jadi kita menulis sama-sama dan itu mempengaruhi dari segi Q3, Q3, Q4, Q2, Q1. Itu ada implikasi dan merupakan indikator yang diambil kira oleh pihak SGR. So ladies and gentlemen, okay, just try to stop here and go further by looking at our particular slide. So we have to ensure that uh, when it comes for the literature review, it should come with a synthesized literature review. People always be today, right, that they are dying for the SLR, systematic literature review. Boleh, tapi asalnya systematic literature review itu daripada disiplin sains. Uh, kita disiplin social science ini tidak perlu sangat tu tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian. Tetapi saya takut bahana di sebalik misconception tu kan bila kita hantar artikel you have to do the systematic literature review for this not suitable for the uh, literature when it come for the uh, doctorate uh, thesis but when it come for the uh, literature for the journal article it will be sufficient at best at least when it come for the synthesis yang penting synthesis ni adalah menghubungkan antara satu idea dengan idea yang lain berpandukan pada penulis yang berbeza. Pendek kata, dalam bahasa Inggeris boleh juga diterjemahkan sebagai amalgamation ataupun penggabungan idea kenapa sama, kenapa berbeza. We have to justify. The literature when it comes for the journal publication here cannot be monotonous. Tidak boleh macam kita jalan lah kan. Kalau di Labuan ni Alhamdulillah jalan, jalan tak ada bengkang-bengkok sangat lah, tiada bonggol dan sebagainya. Alhamdulillah, jalan very very straightforward. But when it come for the other street, especially located in the land of Sabah, uh, the state of Sabah, there will be some sort of the the hole in between. There will be some sort of decay whatsoever, right? Then uh, we learn a little bit. We learn a little bit, right? Uh, how to improve the thing. But when it come for the land uh, situated mainly in the context of Labuan, very straightforward. Uh, uh, less uh, traffic jam and uh, everyone but uh, we learn less and that is why when it comes for the literature review here I just try to analyze from A to Z I have for example five uh, particular author I have to look the pattern for example uh, the author A, the author B, the author C, the author D, the author E what they are similar, what they are different and why and how uh, it is called as a synthesis here Perlu ada tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian sebab kalau kita tulis artikel, kita main letak saja. Contohlah, Hanudin mendapati uh, bahawa uh, makasih tidak sesuai. Full stop. Uh, tak bolehlah. Dia kena ada jambatan tu lengkap. Uh, so, we build a house for example. 
we have the door, we have uh, the, the wall, we have the, 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 the roof, uh, everything, we have the divider inside the house, should also be reflecting when it comes to the general article writing. Uh, dia baru nampak apa yang kita cuba telah dan sampaikan tu sesuai dan juga cocok dalam konteks penulisan. So important there is the synthesis. Eh. Kalau kita tulis macam biasa-biasa saja tu uh, bolehlah untuk persidangan tapi untuk jurnal ni terutamanya kalau nak tembusi jurnal antarabangsa ni kena ada nilai synthesis. Okay, number three, well developed research framework know the difference between conceptual and also theoretical. Kena tahulah kalau conceptual tu apa yang kita miliki. Nah, berpandukan pemilihan kita daripada theoretical framework. So we have a number of theory, but we choose one of the theory from uh, the theoretical framework to be defined as our conceptual framework. Kena jelas tuan-tuan, puan-puan sekalian. Kadang-kadang ada makalah yang dihantar untuk saya wasitkan. Uh, dia cuba sama artikan uh, theoretical dan juga conceptual. Tak bolehlah, dia kena berbeza tuan-tuan. Conceptual ni apa yang kita punya. Theoretical ni adalah apa yang orang lain punya. Kita pinjam dan kita ubah suai. Itu dalam konteks penulisan. Kadang-kadang ada hamba Allah ni dia pandai. Dan boleh diterima akal dan juga uh, penjelasan yang difikirkan sesuai. Yang penting artikel yang dia rujuk itu diletakkan sebagai satu sitasi dalam rujukan beliau. Uh, contohlah ada kawan tu yang menulis tentang Islamic Mortgage yang berkelana di Pakistan. Yang berkelana di Pakistan. Uh, Hanudin berkelana di Malaysia. Uh, jadi Artikel yang diterbitkan tu adalah lebih kurang dengan artikel apa yang saya tulis di Malaysia. Ha, tetapi, tetapi pendek kata di sini, artikel itu menjadi sitasi dalam penulisan beliau. Ada segi ruang lingkup, ada segi uraian, nampak ada persamaan. Tapi tak apalah yang penting ada sitasi untuk mengelakkan pelagarism dan sebagainya. Dan juga uh, yang itu uh, berpandukan kepada kebijaksanaan uh, editor. Yang penting uh, sebelum diwasitkan, Artikel berkenaan perlulah menjalani satu proses penyaringan dari segi kualiti semadayanya hasil kerja tulin ataupun sebaliknya menggunakan pakai turn 18. Turn 18, ladies and gentlemen, right? So, you can utilize here, right? For example, let me try to stop here a while when it comes for the turn 18. So, just try to consider. Yeah, this one, right? Okay, let me try to share with you because it is available uh, currently at UMS. Uh, with, before you are submitting your article, uh, try to make sure that everything is clear regarding uh, free from any elements of uh, plagiarism, right? You just try to type down here something like this. And then you can find out, right? There will be a kind of uh, have a link provided. Uh, login to turn it in. So just try to type something like that. And then all of us at uh, UMS here, sorry, all of us at UMS here, we have this uh, kind of uh, good things uh, from A to Z. Uh. So as you can see here, just uh, try to write down here, Hanudin to Sambilan, right? And then consider uh, the login here. And then uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, right, uh, you can consider a joint account or quick, uh, quick submit, you know, to evaluate whether the article is free from the elements of plagiarism. Just try to consider a quick submit here. And then uh, submit, uh, then uh, you can find the customize your search, right? And then what, what you can do, just uh, tick this uh, search the internet, uh, tick search the internet, tick uh, search student paper, Ketik search critical journal and publications. But do remember one thing uh, considered to be very important here: uh, submit paper to standard paper repository. Don't be. When it comes for the submission like this standard paper repository, everything what you are submitting will be recorded in the database for a lifetime. Hati-hati tuan-tuan dan pengurus sekalian. Terutamanya bila melibatkan individu yang baharu dalam konteks penulisan. Jangan letaklah standard paper repository. Tapi cuba letak no repository. Sebab kalau kawan saya itu berasal daripada Indonesia. dia Kita menulis sama-sama. Dia buat pemeriksaan penilaian penyaringan di Indonesia. 
maka penyaringan dan penilaian itu adalah bersifat bebas dari segi mencakupkan apa yang saya lakukan di Malaysia. Dengan syarat, no repository. But if I put standard paper repository, ha, Allah tuan tuan dan puan-puan sekalian, dia dapat outcome result dekat Indonesia tu 100% pelagiat. 100%. The same thing, right? So just try to consider no repository here, right? And then you can submit. Dia macam tu saja. Very simple. And then you can consider this one. Uh, I mean, just try to choose a file here. Uh, just tr try to choose any. And then the process it will take about um, at best, depending on the sizes. Kalau jenis artikel tu lebih kurang lima minit. Kalau thesis lebih kurang thesis thesis lebih kurang dua puluh ke tiga puluh minit bergantung dari ketebalan. Ada macam tu lah. Jadi bila kita dah upload dan sebagainya baru kita lihat. Nah, sesudah itu dia akan diletakkan lah kembali dekat paparan ini. Dia akan letak. Baru kita nampak sana berapa peratusan. Biasanya kalau untuk penulisan di peringkat jurnal high impact ini, indeks kesamaan itu perlulah berada pada paras 20% atau kurang. Kalau lebih tu kena tegur lah oleh editor ataupun associate editor. Hanya dia please reduce dan dia pergi lah buat lagi. Buka lagi internetin, buat lagi tengah malam, ditemani dengan ya kesunyian malam dan juga uh, teh tarik for example or uh, plain water it will be sufficient right just try to ensure we have energy so bila kita berfikir menggunakan pakai otak minda dia memerlukan air liquid so it is needed nah, itu pasal ada budak-budak di Thailand di Indonesia dia mengalami masalah berlaku di Thailand kematian disebabkan dia main game 24 jam Allahu dan otak beliau tidak dibekalkan dengan liquid ataupun air ataupun cecair. Itu yang menyebabkan kering. Bila kering, Allah boleh otak ni kalau dah kering, kita boleh pengsan. Okay, uh, sorry for that kind of advertisement. Uh, we just stop here. I hope at best uh, all of you familiar with it. And it is provided for free uh, by University Malaysia Sabah. Just maximize the use of it. Saya selalu pakai ni tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian. Bila nak hantar artikel, sebab ada setengah universiti di Malaysia tidak melanggani pangkalan data Tonitin. Dia tidak langgan. Jadi kita ni bersyukur thanks to the management, thanks to penerbit UMS. And also the library, right? More importantly. Okay, just try to stop here. We go back. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we share once again. Right. And uh, number four here, uh, please consider presenting clearly and objectively all aspects involved in the research, beginning uh, by looking at the research design, uh, population, sample characteristic, uh, procedure, uh, technique used for data collection, analysis, and treatment, uh, as well as other aspects involved from research planning to its closing, allowing for, uh, for the replicability and reliability of the study. Kenaklah tu tuan-tuan dan tuan-tuan aspek ni perlu diberi penekanan dalam penulisan jenis artikel berimpak tinggi atau berimpak lah dalam konteks WOS dan juga Scopus. The fifth one, well-written risk finding. The significant outcome denoted as what? Bila kita dapat dapatan tu kan, kita nampak signifikan. Apakah maksud signifikan? Itu perlu diberi justifikasi. Perlu diberi justifikasi. Katakan kalau saya dapat nombor satu dalam kelas masa SPM dulu ataupun masa tingkatan lima. Oh, si Hanudin dapat nombor satu. Apa maksud nombor satu? Nombor satu sebab maka tinggi. Nombor satu dapat hadiah buku daripada guru. Contohlah kan. Jadi cuba perjelaskan dan beri penelitian serta perincian berkenaan dengan apa yang dimaksudkan dengan nombor yang kita hasilkan. Kalau ada nombor. Uh, kalau dia tiada nombor, kita lihat di segi pattern apabila melibatkan kajian secara kualitatif. Uh, terutamanya bila kita buat interview dalam konteks uh, uh, kumpulan yang berfokus ataupun fokus group, uh, maka lebih kepada trend dan juga uh, di segi uh, peratusan respon ataupun maklum balas yang kita boleh telah uh, pandukan pada maklum balas yang diberikan oleh responden. 
So saya percaya uh, dalam konteks social science ni makmal kita adalah masyarakat. Dalam konteks social science ni, makmal kita adalah masyarakat walaupun kita ada kawan-kawan dalam konteks finance econometric yang berpaksikan kepada secondary data, panel data, so on support. Macam kalau kita nak lihat kesan CPI ke atas performance of the nation, for example, in terms about demand, then we are depending on the information published by, say for example, Bank Negara Malaysia, say for example by DOSM, a Department of Statistics Malaysia. So we have to ensure, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, the finding that we discover should be justified. Uh, perlu adalah justifikasi. So kalau tiada justifikasi, memang bolehlah kan diterima tuan-tuan, tapi tak sedap. Macam kita masak... Uh, macam di di ya, di sempurna tu kan kalau orang bajau lah sebelah sana kita masak uh, orang sana panggil sag, sagol tapi kalau saya masih pegang sinagol pakai ikan buntal tu uh, saya tambah kunyit banyak banyak baru baru sedap but without that kind of uh, the the that kind of uh, uh, ingredient right uh, this thing uh, this particular cooking will not will not be delicious still can be edible boleh dimakan tapi tidak nampak Uh, menyenangkan hati kita. Kadang-kadang bila kita menulis ada yang tak tak cukup tu kita pun risau. Ha? Sebab kenapa? Hasil yang kita terbitkan ni akan kekal selama-lamanya selagi database itu wujud ataupun selagi dunia ni masih uh, berterusan berlaku. Uh, Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian. That, that is the thing I need mean, also to be considered. We are not uh, aiming to become a professionist. Perfectionist. Kita tak mau jadi orang yang macam berfikiran uh, semua sempurna. Tidak. Yang penting sini uh, asalkan ianya sudah memberi satu gambaran ianya mencukupi. Ianya mencukupi untuk diterbitkan. Uh, oleh yang demikian adalah penting apa-apa nombor yang signifikan atau tidak signifikan ataupun trend pattern tu corak dan sebagainya perlulah diberi justifikasi kenapa sedemikian. Uh, ada hamba Allah on the other hand they are concerned this part of the discussion boleh juga ada masalah cuma kalau boleh ada kelainan sedikit ada kelainan sedikit apa maksud 1.96 contoh okay number six a uh, clear practical and theoretical contribution besides social impact uh, ladies and gentlemen when it comes for the journal article like the high impact journal right uh, introduced and also Uh, that can be found in numbers of the WOS, right, database, or even the Scopus database. Uh, more importantly, at the end of the finding, right, we have to write something related about discussion. And uh, the discussion here will be contrasting the idea uh, from A to Z. My point will be like this today. My discovery will be like this today. But how about the particular uh, information or the finding of previous studies? So I have to contrast. By contrasting, then I discover what makes my study uh, today, Hanudin study, and the other study considered to be different, consider, considered to be the same. So I have to justify a little bit. At least one point will be sufficient. Itu pengalaman lah. Kalau nak tambah-tambah tu, lihat juga di segi uh, jumlah uh, patah perkataan yang dibenarkan dalam setiap penerbitan makalah. Ladies and gentlemen, so importantly, right, uh, look into that kind of things. But uh, on the other hand, the moment that we already capture the discussion, then the, 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 the second last will be uh, contribution. Some say the contribution to be called as practical uh, implications, uh, the theoretical implications, and then as well as the methodological uh, contribution or implications. But today, Today, ladies and gentlemen, the, due to the fact that we have a kind of collaborating approach with the United Nations, SDG, uh, Sustainable Development Goal, SDG. So we have to provide some sort of the interlinkages between our finding and what our finding will be communicating. What will be the usefulness of our finding regarding uh, to the implication that it can be brought to the social implication, social or the society. What would be the the contribution that can be made by our research in order to improve the well-being of the so of the uh, uh, social or, or the, our society at large, ladies and gentlemen? So importantly, uh, need also to include that one. 
because uh, I just try to uh, share with you. Uh, I mean, this year I have uh, published one article, and then uh, one of the reason of the delay of the publication because I'm not including the social implications. I'm not including the social implication. Uh, based on the recommendation by the reviewer ataupun pawasit, then I'm making a number of adjustments to that uh, published articles. So by Allah will, Alhamdulillah, it is accepted. Okay, number seven, formatted according to the journal we submit. And this is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Benda yang paling penting, ha? bila kita nak hantar ni, jangan hantar lah macam uh, contoh lah, pengalaman lah. Pengalaman uh, sebagai associate editor untuk satu journal. Jadi saya terima satu artikel ni yang ditulis oleh orang Iran. Ha? Orang Iran, kawan kita lah orang Iran ni lebih berpaksikan kepada Syiah ataupun Syeteh ataupun Al-Jafari. Jadi yang saya terima manuskrip tu kenapa bawa panjang-panjang habis tu macam tesis. <laughs> ya kalau ia pun janganlah hantar macam tu kan penat membaca tuan-tuan uh, 40 muka surat. I read uh, day and night right? try to understand just try to help that person. But then I see uh, this is not supported to be sent for the review because it will be also breaking down the credentials of the journals. Uh, dah benda tak boleh nak dihantarkan. Jadi saya bagi pemakluman kepada editor, uh, bos, uh, lebih kurang lah kan, bos tak boleh ni, a number of issue. Uh, this work is not permitted accordingly based on the journal that we have today. Jadi kita serahkan balik uh, dalam konteks itu dan uh, sesudah berkenaan, maka uh, editor membuat keputusan bahawa artikel tersebut ditolak. Okay, let me try to share with you the example of this, right, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Setakat perkongsian lah untuk suka-suka sahaja. Manalah tahu satu hari nanti anda boleh jadi uh, editor dan juga associate editor untuk email publishing. Okay, in the, uh, for example, right, uh, GIBR. Okay, this one. I was becoming as, as the uh, associate editor for Journal of Islamic Accounting and uh, business research uh, in uh, 2000 uh, and 2020 uh, in 2020 during the pandemic, right? So uh, you can go here. This is uh, normally the MC uh, dot manuscript strand central. This one to be called as a scholar one, uh, scholar one. Ini adalah platform yang digunakan oleh mana-mana jurnal antarabangsa, jurnal domestik dalam usaha untuk mewasikan artikel yang dihantar. Dalam konteks ni ada wujud pelbagai dan peranan. Okay. Dan konteks yang paling dekat yang saya boleh kongsi adalah jurnal yang diterbitkan oleh Universiti Sains Malaysia. ASEAN Academy of uh, Management Journals. They are utilizing this uh, scholar one. Walau bagaimanapun, ini adalah alternatif tuan-tuan dan perempuan. Tidak semestinya. Kalau di UMS kita ada sistem tersendiri, uh, boleh pakai, tak ada masalah. Uh, tidaklah ma memperlihatkan bahawa kalau jurnal itu tidak menggunakan pakai scholar one ni, maka kualiti yang kurang. Tidak, itu bukan tuan-tuan. Ini adalah alternatif sahaja. Sama juga dalam konteks uh, kita mengendalikan kelas bahawa Kelas dalam talian itu adalah alternatif, bukan sifatnya berkekalan. So, kalau kita diajar dalam konteks Islamia, kelas yang paling baik adalah secara bersemuka dalam konteks fizikal uh, uh, dan sebagainya. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just try to consider this one, right? Uh, uh, just try to share with uh, all of you. Okay, uh, this one. And you can uh, register, you can create your own, uh, for example, right, the one here. You can just try to consider login here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, okay. Okay, uh, under the email of publishing, uh, typically, uh, when you are becoming as an author, then uh, the thing will be provided in here. For example, this one, right, uh, the author here will be giving, uh, will be given by the the publisher for you and me uh, to see our submission to make submissions so you can uh, do something like this start new submission uh, just try to familiarize with the thing uh, start new submission uh, ladies and gentlemen but at the same time the moment that you are becoming is the author the moment that you are becoming is the author the editor will recognize you Anudin from UMS and then uh, he keep uh, contact you 
to appoint you as a reviewer. Uh, this is a good chance, ladies and gentlemen, to become as a reviewer is a by initiating in the first place to become as an author. So just try to click in here, something like this. Uh, then you can find there will be a number. In my case here, I have uh, reviewed throughout, throughout the years about 52 uh, general article from A to Z. And then on the other hand, uh, considering myself as an associate editor, you can here uh, find discover a number of the particular assignments, a number of awaiting a e recommendation. As an associate editor, we only recommend, but we are not doing the decision, the decision to be made by the editor. Uh, tapi kita boleh bagi cadangan dan buah pikiran dalam usaha untuk menambah baik. Tapi kalau artikel tu tidak diformatkan berpandukan pada jurnal, uh, memang kadang-kadang ada rasa biasalah kan kita manusia ni ada rasa manusiawi, uh, humanity ataupun dipanggil sebagai empati. Memang ada rasa nak membantu. Tapi kalau orang tu tak bantu diri dia, Allah kita tak boleh bantu juga. Katakanlah dia hantar kajian yang baik tapi tidak diformatkan. Uh, bila itu berlaku uh, di hujung kita terpaksa buat keputusan untuk menolak melainkan uh, kalau artikel itu boleh diperbaiki lagi biasanya saya akan lakukan satu perkara uh, saya akan lakukan satu perkara tuan-tuan dan puan-puan uh, contohlah kan ini perkongsian <laughs> contohlah ataupun ada contoh ataupun kita pergi sini inilah kan ini banyaklah artikel. Tapi associate editor ni ramai sebenarnya tuan-tuan, puan-puan sekalian bukan seorang lah kan. Okey, dalam kes ni contohlah macam ni kan. Saya boleh pulangkan artikel itu kepada penulis. Saya boleh pulangkan artikel itu kepada penulis secara sekolah one manuscript ni. Ini adalah satu platform untuk pewasitan. Saya boleh letak di sini tuan-tuan. Letak kosong saja. Bila saya letak kosong dan saya ketik save ataupun saya just press the button save here, then all of a sudden that particular article will be returned to the author for adjustment in terms about the formatting. Kalau artikel itu boleh diselamatkan, kalau tidak saya akan tolak lah. Macam mana saya tolak? Saya akan bagi rekomendasi artikel ini terpaksa ditolak atas sebab-sebab berkenaan. Tetapi sebab-sebab yang dirungkaikan adalah bersifat uh, konkret. Uh, tak boleh kita bagi komentar yang ringkas dan tidak dipahami. Contohlah kan, this article is rejected. Full stop. Uh, tak bolehlah. This article is rejected because of uh, bagi penjelasan. Supaya nampak message itu boleh dibaca oleh editor dan message itu boleh disampaikan dalam konteks yang padu dan juga ampuh untuk pemahaman penulis agar penulis pada masa akan datang tidak mengulangi kesalahan yang sama itu sebab sedikitlah tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian so we go further ya harapkan kan uh, jelaslah uh, sebab sedikit perkongsian uh, ini pengalaman kendiri ataupun pengalaman sendiri uh, bagi saya pentinglah untuk memberi uh, ukuran dan juga fokus uh, kepada item-item yang saya sebutkan seketika tadi dalam usaha untuk membolehkan artikel yang ditulis itu mencapai objektif dia untuk diterbitkan dan setelah itu boleh dinikmati oleh semua penulis sebagai satu pembacaan umum dan pembacaan khusus dalam membolehkan bahawa ada kajian susulan boleh dilakukan dan sesudah itu adalah sitasi yang boleh kita gembar-gembukan sebagai uh, sumbangan dalam konteks penulisan ilmiah. So, perlu ada sitasi juga tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian, uh, apalah dan kita boleh terangkan di sini bahawa hasil yang baik itu ada sitasi uh, dan sitasi itu menjadi satu ukuran untuk kita punya scaling uh, al-mizan, uh, sebelah kanan sebelah kiri sebelah kanan kebaikan sebelah kiri uh, keburukan lah. Jadi yang kita cuba nak letak sini bila dalam konteks penerbitan adalah sebelah kanan. Al-Mizan uh, sebelum ditentukan sebelah tempat kita adalah syurga atau neraka. Jadi uh, saya dalam from the Islamic perspective, the learning of the tasawuf. So uh, when it comes to the tips, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the tips, right, as the title implied earlier, I have mentioned 
to all of you uh, that uh, we have to consider some of the particular tips uh, you know to publish you know you know to ensure we have a very proper uh, writing that can be penetrate the global market mainly for the journal articles the journal platform so uh, the first uh, thing that we need to understand here ladies and gentlemen familiarization with journal article and some source relevant as follow i have uh, highlighted earlier uh, you know to ensure we have a very good uh, information regarding about the schemago regarding about the scopus regarding about the claribet or mgl uh, indicating about was uh, and the scopus here indicating about the elsevier and the schemago here indicating about that kind of uh, q1 q2 q3 q4 but in the future, I believe in Malaysia, we have this my site and then we have a very proper uh, record regarding about the journal uh, published by the Malaysian publisher, as well as the university at best here. So the first thing that we have to understand, we try to familiarize. We try to familiarize from A to Z regarding about the journal article, regarding about the uh, journal platform, and then by looking the consideration of this uh, particular uh, I mean, uh, databases, but more importantly, along with the line, to make things more easier for me and you, we can look directly by capturing the journal article URL or the uniform resource locator. So what we can do, uh, let me try to give you an example here, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see here, right, uh, say for instance, uh, I go to International uh, General of Ethics and System, this one. You can find, right, uh, very easy. We have, you are utilizing this uh, search engine, Google, or even you can use uh, Yahoo, right, in the past, Yahoo and also Hotmail. But today, no longer very popular today is uh, Google. It's uh, a very uh, common uh, search engine. So just try to click the first one here, uh, the first outcome. Uh, what does it mean about the familiarization with the journal? So you read from A to Z about the how many uh, uh, volume that needs to be considered, right? And then how many issue? More importantly, how many issue? Ladies and gentlemen, sir. Say for example, uh, this uh, month is about June, right? So very, very, um, the time is very very uh, compact when it comes for the journal article publication uh, in order to ensure we have a leeway a kind of room for us to publish right making sure that the issue for the journal article very very broad and also very very diversified not only combined to uh, twice a year if possible third or fourth or even a fifth will be sufficient enough ladies and gentlemen just try to give a very good indication that we are able to be uh, evaluated our manuscript and to be given that kind of a proper decision at the end of a three month at least. So the article can be published later on. So. But at the email perspective, they have the earlier side, uh, earlier side like this one, at the center. Just try to familiarize with this uh, particular journal in the first place, look at the issue number. And uh, secondly, you can look the uh, the editor here about the journal just try to click about the journal something like this ladies and gentlemen you can find out right about the uh, description of it uh, and the scope you have to learn right so what is all about uh, you have to familiarize with the thing make a very good reading during the leisure time especially during this uh, semester right uh, we already completed the class and also the evaluation then just try to spend a little bit longer for reading purposes read the journal one by one right um, before we are making the final submission for the journal that we are for the article that we are intend to uh, submit to the journal so in this case for instance this international journal of ethics and system is a peer review uh, remember peer review is very important in our class in our class here peer review is very important uh, there will be some sort of the predatory journal uh, the predatory journal, uh, say for example, I submit today, right, the article, I made an experiment, one of the particular country in the world, but I'm not mentioning about the country, because I'm afraid about the racism. 
And then I'm submitting this article to the to the journal. And then within uh, two days, I received the outcome. Alhamdulillah, you know, the outcome. The article is subject to the minor correction. Please uh, revise the article. Uh, I mean, accordingly, and I, I'm happy. I mean, but this is experiment. I don't really happy, but this is experiment only. Then I read from A to Z regarding about the website of the journal. There will be no APC. Uh, I mean that the author processing charge. There will be no a submission fee. Very clear. But the moment that I sign the agreement with the journal, then this editor was saying, please provide please provide a payment of uh, 500 US dollar. <laughs> Dala kita penat menulis, penat menganalis Allah. Wah, kena bayar pula lepas ni. Itu masalah saya tuan-tuan dan pemerintah. Saya tak suka membayar sebab kenapa. Dalam konteks kita ni kan hasil akademik tu bersifat suci. Kalau boleh, bila kita hantar biarlah jurnal tu terima. Seadanya lagi pun, jurnal tu yang akan dapat untung. Contohlah email publishing, they are generating more profit when they come for the publication. Tapi kalau predatory jurnal, dia bersifat individu bersifat uh, bersifat cutter kata orang ada satu komplot dipanggil sebagai dalam bahasa Inggeris sebagai uh, collusions uh, jadi amat berbahayalah tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian hantar artikel dalam konteks dua hari saya terima dapatan uh, memang cantik tapi sesudah tu saya wasitkan dan sebagainya dan saya buat pembetulan saya hantar semula hanya sebagai experimental dan saya disuruh bayar lebih kurang 500 US dollar Kali empat ringgit lebih kurang dalam dua ribu. Banyak juga tuan-tuan dan perempuan sekalian. Ya, banyak juga tu kan. But the money is not important, right? The UMS provide that kind of sponsorship. Tapi kasihan lah UMS kan nak kita gunakan dana UMS tu. Tapi jurnal tu jurnal pemangsa Allah. Nah, itulah hati-hatilah kan tuan-tuan dan perempuan sekalian. Uh, saya buat eksperimen lah dan saya nampak sesudah tu. Apa yang saya buat? Say so keep on asking, can you give me an invoice? Once. Second, can you give me an invoice? Third, can you give me an invoice? Editor tak jawab. Sehingga satu hari tu tuan-tuan dan perempuan sekalian, jurnal itu telah pun dikeluarkan daripada database Scopus. Alasan dia dipanggil sebagai publication concern. Apa maksud publication concern dia? Di sini ada masalah dari segi perwasitan. Ada masalah dari segi pewasitan. Uh, yang mewasitkan tu orang mereka sendiri dalam konteks uh, coalitions. Dipanggil sebagai cartel. Uh, bahaya sebab dewasa ini penerbitan ni menjadi satu perniagaan dalam kalangan individu yang dipanggil sebagai predator ataupun pemangsa. Uh, kalau dalam cerita movie dulu tahun 80-an, uh, Anu Sosunaga okey lah predator. <laughs> But not this, this this predator is a very, very... Uh, Cunning, you know, very very uh, different. They have their own strategy. Itu pasal penulis penulis muda kena tahu tuan tuan. Jangan muda lah kan terpedaya dalam konteks penulisan. Memang ada individu yang cuba ambil kesempatan di atas kesempitan yang kita ada. Terutamanya di segi penulisan. Kalau ini mesti kata, okay, Hanudin perlu terbitan dalam satu tahun uh, satu uh, scopus. Jadi terpaksa lah mencari mana-mana ruang dan peluang. Tapi kalau boleh, elakkanlah. Sebab bukan juga apa, nama kita juga yang tercalar. Bila artikel itu diterbitkan, jurnal itu predatory jurnal. Contohlah kan, ada nama saya sana, Hanudin. Eh, malunya saya tu tuan-tuan. Memalukan saya. Nanti kalau saya jadi profesor, Allahu. Uh, it's not very good things. Uh, I mean, uh, people will be defining as the one that always be circulating, rotating on social media. Dipanggil sebagai profesor kangkung di sana dan bahayalah yang kita boleh rungkaikan. Tapi kita doa daripada Tuhan supaya kita dikeluarkan daripada semua ni lah segala bahan lah. Okay, uh, more importantly peer review and as you can see here, read uh, the scope here with the it is in light with our own discipline. With the, they are in light with our, our discipline or not. Let's try to understand ladies and gentlemen. Then you can read also the, the editor here. In my case here, what I do, in my case, uh, I try to familiarize with the editor uh, board here, right? Then I can do, for example, when I come for the editor here, just try to highlight here and then just try to make the the searching. Then I can find out this is uh, the the editor. Kita familiarize dengan dia. Kita cuba baca siapa dia. Uh, itu dan sebagainya. Huh? 
I'm doing that. And as you can see here, I'm doing this kind of exercise that is a gentleman from A to Z. So I read at a particular editor, and then I just try to memorize the way of the publications. Bolehlah kita lihat sini kan. Ada juga uh, ni Google Scholar boleh lihat kan. Uh, banyaklah cara dewasa ini semua maklumat tu uh, ber, adalah bersifat uh, menembusi antara satu dinding dengan dinding yang lain. Disebabkan ada kemudahan internet yang berperanan sebagai penghubung global antara satu individu dengan individu lain. Kalau kita nak hubungi kawan, biasanya kita akan gunakan internet. Kalau kita nak hubungi Tuhan, biasanya kita berzikir. Uh, kind of thing, something related, right? For instance, people they are using this website whatsoever. Tapi dalam konteks saya, kadang-kadang kawan-kawan tu konteks saya kan, sorry lah lewat. So, masa tu saya tengah bercakap dengan orang, biasanya saya akan letak handset to the tepi lah. Not really like that most thing, right? Because it will be uh, not able to control my own perspective or my conversation. Uh, kalau kita bercakap dengan orang, kita lihat handset tu macam tak bagus lah dalam konteks etika dan juga adaf. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just kind of sharing here, right? Uh, if you're here, one, uh, sorry. Uh, this one. Then you can try to familiarize everything in the editorial advisory board here. Everything here, right? Just try to memorize. And then more importantly, when I come for the submission to the journal, uh, try to have a look the the author guide guideline here. Nah, ini lah. Ini paling penting, tuan-tuan. Ini paling penting. Bacalah uh, kalau kita ada satu penghantaran tu untuk artikel uh, yang kita ada ni untuk kita hantar ke jurnal, perlulah kita teliti dan buat perincian yang betul. Before you start, author responsibility, research and publishing ethics, uh, third party copyright permission, uh, semua perlu diperhatikan lah dengan lebih lanjut. Dan sesudah itu baru kita perlihatkan manuscript requirement ataupun keperluan, keperluan untuk manuskrip. Uh, agar ianya boleh diproses seterusnya oleh editor. Lihat dari segi format. Uh, kalau dalam konteks Imira, biasanya yang paling penting di sini adalah ini tuan-tuan dan perempuan sekalian. Uh, Artikel should be between 6,000 up to 12,000. Uh, ini kerja banyak ambil masalah. Kalau artikel kita tu 20,000 muka surah. 20,000 patah perkataan, sorry. Jadi perlulah dikurangkan, uh, di, di, ditelitikan dalam konteks yang dalam jajaran 6,000 sehingga 12,000 patah perkataan dari segi kepanjangan. Habis itu ada juga requirement sini kan. Uh, please allow 280 words for each figure or table. Uh, inilah yang kita boleh uh, nampak tuan-tuan dan perempuan sekalian. Uh, banyaklah benda kan dan juga yang paling unik untuk uh, Emerald ni kita nampak structure and structure ni lah uh, dalam konteks ni kita boleh buat pancarian pelbagai lagi kita boleh lihat mana-mana disiplin uh, terutamanya arts and humanity biasanya uh, ladies and gentlemen when it come for Emerald Publishing Limited UK the article published related to social, social sciences uh, majority, uh, majority social sciences so just try to stop here. Coming back to uh, the presentation slide, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, jadi uh, jelaslah kan familiarization uh, kena lah uh, cuba adaptasi di segi cara penulisan untuk jurnal tu. Uh, Kadang-kadang ada juga hamba Allah ni dia pandai. Uh, tak payah pun nak ikut kelas semua sana sini kan. Cuma baca satu artikel, fahamkan cara dia ikut bahasa Inggeris dia uh, boleh terbit. Uh, ada tu. Contohlah Profesor Dr. Pazlan Sopian, my friend. Ah uh, University uh, University Islam Malaysia, ya, uh, University Islam Malaysia. Ada kawan saya ni, dia memang uh, pandai dalam konteks uh, baca satu artikel, tak payah baca semua, baca satu artikel cuba formatkan berpandukan pada artikel, cara penyampaian, uh, message uh, dan juga uh, structure dia. Then article tu uh, boleh diterbitkan. Uh, some people they can be very genius or brilliant in deciding the best uh, permanentization here to take place. So do understand, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, Kemago, as uh, Copas, uh, Clary Bet, whatsoever here, and then more importantly, along with the line, uh, familiarize with the journal URL, the journal website from A to Z, mainly in terms of the author guidelines. So even it will not be uh, very, very uh, considered as a plus point or everything to be the, the, the reason for the acceptance. But at least we are fulfilling the format of the journal. 
we are making the 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 duty of the review by the editor and also the review will be easier itu tujuan dia lah kenapa kita formatkan artikel itu berpandukan kepada butiran dan garis panduan jurnal tersebut untuk memudahkan kerja pewasitan tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian. Okay, tip number two, uh, the way I'm doing uh, typically, uh, we are generating idea. So how do we try to generate idea number one, familiar with current issue in your discipline? Uh, in many cases, ladies and gentlemen, in many cases, the high impact journal will be publishing any particular issue related, but to capture the current situation in your discipline. Say for example, right during the pandemic, we are receiving a number of difficulties. Some people, they just try to let off. They don't have any money to, bet, to, to pay their own particular monthly instrument of their vehicle. Ada kejadian. Some people, they are not able to pay the, the, the mortgage, the loan of the house. Some people, they just try to able to manage properly. The family structure is collapsing. And because of uh, this uh, implication. So in order to help this individual, what we can do, we develop some sort of the particular instruments. Uh, like for example, in the past, uh, I have this kind of thought, uh, but this is a very old version of the thought, right? In 2006, Fadul Hassan was, um, was not initiated longer. I mean, was not in existence in the Islamic banking system. I mean, it was introduced by Bank Islam Malaysia Brahe in 1985, but then later in 2006, uh, that particular Kadul Hassan financing no longer in existence. The reason why, because it is not capturing the uh, the commercial objective of Islamic Bank, that is profit maximization, whereby Kadul Hassan is only capturing social obligation. So then I consider the idea bring to the current situations. That idea is very all right. Bring to the current situation by using new particular methodological thought. Ada perbezaan tuan-tuan saya gunakan isu dia tu adalah pandemik orang tak mampu bayar hutang orang orang tak ada pekerjaan breadwinner find very difficult to make a very good living. Bolehlah bergantung dengan bantuan kerajaan tapi bantuan kerajaan ni bukan bersifat berterusan. Uh, untuk membolehkan berterusan tu kena ada bantuan lain yang bersifat berterusan. Jadi saya buat kajian berkenaan dengan Kadul Hassan and capture the need of the breadwinner to a certain extent. And then I'm using this uh, methodology from uh, the decision science. Decision science. Uh, tengok dalam konteks kita gunakan decision science because in the general article, right, and when it comes to our methodology, that methodology is the the, the, the science uh, section, uh, the science section, because it deal with the process, what would be the method used in order to generate the finding. So I am considering the decision science. It is called as a WM or the simple additive weightage method. Uh, I mean, introduced by uh, a scholar, uh, I mean, who is an expert in the area of decision uh, uh, making. Uh, theory and so on and so forth. So uh, by having that kind of idea, right, then I consider to streamline everything and then try to begin to submit the idea. I mean, for time being, but not yet to be accepted. I'm still in the process of review by the editor, ladies and gentlemen. So. And secondly, read journal article published recently. Read journal article published recently. Uh, the moment that uh, we are in this discipline, for example, we are doing something about the music, right? Uh, regarding about the mu musical composition, uh, how the musical con uh, composition will be different from the Sabahan style, the Sarawakian style, or even the Malay style. Uh, there will be a different composition. Uh, kalau ada kajian lah, tentang cara macam mana penciptaan lagu itu dibuat, amat berbeza. Kalau di negara barat, uh, dia berbeza. Uh, dia really like a very, very, a very, very uh, small uh, particular rhythm rather than a very, very long uh, distant rhythm. Uh, if you uh, have heard about the song uh, composed by the lead uh, vocalist uh, by a Scorpion, then you can know about Under the Same Sun, right? <laughs> kind of something like that. But in Malaysia, it would be a little bit different. Mainly, 
when the themes introduced by uh, M. Nasir uh, has influenced us a lot in terms about the song uh, composed. So, but there will be a number of it, ladies and gentlemen. But that kind of uh, thing, right, uh, the moment that we have this kind of issue whatsoever, then what we can do directly, we just try to con uh, convert into a new idea. Uh, in a way of uh, highlighting this thing, uh, I still do remember, right? Uh, especially for those who are doing about musical whatsoever, you can try to extend the theory from the psychological. I mean, the psychological effect of the music uh, toward the individual, especially to the patient whatsoever, right? Because by having music, individual can be able to recall back and they can have a very good well-being. Now, music ni sebenarnya dia menyenangkan lah, dia mententramkan jiwa dan naluri, berpandukan apa yang dilongkaikan oleh Profesor Dr. Husub Al-Qadawi. Hukum mendengar muzik ni adalah harus ha, dengan syarat tidak mengabaikan keperluan padu ain. Itu dalam konteks Islamia. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian, yang penting message yang disampaikan itu tidak berunsur bonification or something very, very naughty, but uh, related to the humanity, related to the feeling of being loved between husband and wife, between siblings, so on and so forth. So we can read the journal article related, right, and publish in any uh, journal. And then we try to familiarize. And then the moment that we can synthesize the idea, then we have the idea uh, to uh, learn and to see whether that uh, particular research is uh, possible to be conducted. And how can be done? The moment that you are reading the general article, right, you try to have a look the conclusion part. The conclusion part will be explaining about research limitation. Research limitation. And then that research limitation will be your idea, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to be praying with all of you. Or even the title per se, uh, for example, a study is conducted regarding about the uh, expatriate, right, uh, working at UMS, number one. And then this research is all about this expatriate, uh, how they feel to work at UMS. But on the other hand, there will be no such research comparing between UMS and also IIUM, for example. So what we can do is try to do the comparison. But a good research a journal article published will be indicating that anything for the future uh, research uh, will be uh, located and explained under the limitation section, which is under the conclusions. Doctor? Yeah. Uh, we do have seven more minutes left before we open for a Q&A session. Okay, okay, sorry. Sorry, Munir, banyak, banyak benda ni cerita ni. <laughs> okay, uh, we go further, ladies and gentlemen, uh, perkongsian akan, ini perkongsian pengalaman kendiri lah. Okay, yang ketiga, choose the right journal. Uh, kenalah. Uh, tapi dalam konteks pemilihan jurnal yang baik tu perlu diberi penekanan. Ada dua jenis, uh, ada dua jenis jurnal yang uh, keberadaan dia memang jelas dalam konteks akademia. Uh, yang pertama dipanggil sebagai generalist. What does it mean by generalist? A journal that accept paper generally. Nama dia lah, a journal of uh, management, uh, journal of management, everything related about the management to be accepted. A niche. A journal that accept papers specifically. Contoh lah kan, a journal of uh, Islamic accounting, uh, very specific. So we have to understand about the uh, uh, particular coverage of the journal. But more importantly, more importantly, make a try. Make a try to submit at the very high hierarchy of the journal. Beginning Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Memang ambil masa tuan-tuan dan puan-puan tetapi in many uh, cases, right, this will be improve uh, your own particular involvement in the peer review process and also to improve further the quality of the work that we are doing. Uh, trust me, it happened to me. And then uh, the article managed to be published. Uh, the one that you can see just now, right, regarding about that Makassi and then how it, it is in the linkages with the uh, uh, Islamic home financing. But more importantly, as a uh, I mean, promoted by the management of the university, uh, Malaysia Sabah, we have to look at this uh, scopus. Uh, memang yang seperti yang telah digariskan sebelum ini, kalau kita terbitkan dalam Q1, uh, dia ada uh, bahagian tertentu lah di segi labah dan sebagainya. Dan marka itu adalah didarapkan dengan dua, berbanding uh, untuk yang sains. 
Nah, itu kelebihanlah yang kita diberikan oleh pihak atasan dalam konteks penilaian prestasi. Okay, tip number four, submit complete and pre-flagrized work. If possible, please do not submit unfinished paper you know, to receive comment. Janganlah ini membuang masa, tuan-tuan. Membuang masa. Sebab kalau kita hantar artikel tu dan tiba-tiba uh, dia tahu siapa kita. Uh, dia tahu siapa kita dan di hujung-hujung uh, bila itu berlaku kan, niat kita hanya untuk dapatkan maklum balas. Jadi pada kali kedua, editor akan sejak tidak langsung menolak. Dia akan tolak tu artikel. Uh, this is a kind of experience that I have gone through. So we have to ensure the submission should be complete. Comply with the general format, table, figure, and also please do strictly comply to the words limits. Itu pun penting. Sebab dia memang nak jimatkan masa editor, dia nak jimatkan juga masa uh, pewasit, dan yang paling penting nak jimatkan kos penerbitan. Sebab tuan-tuan dan perempuan sekalian, untuk type setting, uh, Emira Publishing Limited UK ni, dia buat outsourcing. Outsourcing ni berkelana di negara India. Ha, India tu menjadi pusat. Sebab kalau kita lihat ramai yang um, bijak dan juga cedik pandai di sana dalam konteks uh, uh, IT uh, dan juga komputeran. Uh, terutamanya bila melibatkan satu tempat dipanggil sebagai slum ataupun Mumbai ataupun Bombay. Uh, tempat tu lah ramai uh, cendekiawan cuma tempat dia terlalu bersifat uh, perbezaan dan sebagainya. Okay, at best table and figure are placed in a separate file. Ni kalau boleh, bila kita hantar artikel, terutamanya dalam konteks uh, jurnal berreportasi tinggi, uh, Taylor and Francis, Emira Publishing, for example, we have to make a separate submission. Uh, ini untuk manuskrip, yang ini untuk table and figure. Tak boleh sama, tuan-tuan. Kalau sama tu biasanya editor ataupun associate editor, dia akan tolak ataupun dia akan pulangkan kepada penulis untuk penambahbaikan dari segi formatting dan sebagainya. Okay, number four, uh, continue as you can see here. Please make sure references cited in the text appear in the references. Ini kena baca ulang kali. Kadang-kadang kita tulis seronok sebab yang penting menulis. Sama juga kita masak, masak nasi lemak. Uh, kita seronok masak. Tapi kita terlupa uh, pinggan yang mana satu. Kita letak dekat pinggan untuk uh, sup sebagai contoh. Memang tak sesuai lah tuan-tuan. Jadi dalam konteks uh, penulisan, uh, making sure that references cited in the text also appear in the list of references. Uh, kena baca lah satu persatu. Dan untuk membolehkan ini lebih baik, gunakanlah perisian uh, sebagai contoh Mendeley, uh, Endnotes dan sebagainya. Tetapi cuma masalah dia nanti apabila melibatkan formatting. Uh, itu akan wujud technicality dan sebagainya, tapi lazimnya di peringkat Emiral, mereka boleh lakukan yang terbaik. Always mention any source of funding when you're submitting the article. Kenalah bagi tahu kalau ditajak oleh UMS, kena letak nama UMS lah. Familiar with general platform like this one, the Scholar One, to be called here, mc.manuscriptcentral.com and slash GIBR. I check your work for plagiarism before submission. Yang paling baik 20%, excellent lah. 25% tu boleh terima, 30% tu neutral. Tapi 30% dengan 25% ni biasanya dia akan tolak tuan-tuan. Editor, dia akan suruh admin dekat jurnal tu. Please check for plagiarism. Sebab dalam konteks email, dalam konteks mana-mana platform, they I would like to avoid this kind of thing. Because in the past, right, There will be some a numbers of the author from the Middle East countries. Mereka buat banyaklah benda-benda yang pelik data duplication or even translation dalam bahasa sebagai contoh dalam bahasa Iran diterjemahkan dalam bahasa Inggris dalam bahasa Arab diterjemahkan dalam bahasa Inggris. Itu berlaku tuan-tuan. Memang kena check lah sebagai associate editor dan juga editor. If your corresponding author asks your collaborative author to make a final reading, kena lah. Kalau kita dalam konteks uh, kerja berpasukan, kena panggil kawan bos. Boleh kau anu kan uh, baca sekejap sebelum kita hantar esok. Uh, kena lah dibuat. Sebab memang walaupun macam saya saya tulis banyak kali kan, saya tulis hari ini memang tu banyak salah. 
saya kena letak dulu selama tiga hari saya minum uh, kopi dan sebagainya uh, hari kemudian tu barulah saya lihat memang ada salah tonton jadi kenalah dalam konteks penulisan yang melibatkan kolaborasi ni uh, kita perlukan pertolongan kawan-kawan ya. kawan-kawan kena menyumbang lah supaya dia tahu juga apa yang cuba ditelaah dan diuji dan dikaji dalam kajian tersebut kalau tidak tu uh, yang kita takut apabila ada sesi uh, temu juga untuk kenaikan pangkat uh, ada masalah What do you understand about this particular work? Your name is in there, but how do you contribute? Uh, itu ada masalah, tuan-tuan dan puan. Jadi, dalam konteks collaboration, I should be uh, collaborating in a very effective way so the person will be able to convey the message of that particular publication. Number four. Number five here. Uh, we have to consider uh, six items for good developed abstract. Uh, kenalah. And ini yang paling penting kan ada purpose, and design, finding, research limitations, uh, practical implication, and also originality ataupun novelty. Uh, so you can see here number five. Uh, number six, uh, consider good title. Point to remember uh, should be accurate, specific, describing, simple, no acronym. Uh, tak bolehlah abbreviation tu jangan letak lah. Kalau nak letak juga uh, kena dalam kurungan. Uh, kena dalam kurungan sebab biasanya kan kalau diletak macam tu pewasit dan juga editor dia tak tahu uh, contohlah kan kalau saya letak SAW uh, SAW jadi saya tak beri penjelasan apa SAW tapi kalau dalam konteks uh, sains ada cara mereka tersendiri tapi dalam konteks social science if possible no acronym uh, uh, no abbreviations Uh, contohlah kan dalam konteks bahasa kebangsaan pawagam. Nah, pawagam tu adalah singkatan daripada kata panjang dia panggung wayang gambar. Panggung wayang gambar. Nah, singkatan dia pawagam. Nah. The visibility of your work is rely on the search engine today in which the title uh, should be easy to be remember and typed by future author. Nah, jadi kena pilih Uh, yang sesuai lah. Contoh lah kan Islamic Banking Acceptance. Uh, Cukup lah kalau itu menghiburkan hati editor dan juga pewasit. Islamic Banking Acceptance ataupun uh, Islamic Banking Receptiveness sebagai contoh. Uh, Karena masalah yang penting diterima seadanya oleh editor dan juga pewasit. Okay, number seven here. Uh, before we are making the submission, there is and gentlemen, point to remember. Ensure all documents submitted are available. Number one, the main manuscript is already formatted. Already formatted. Table and file are two separate documents are now ready for submission. Ah, perlu diadakan. Information about the author should also made available. Supaya editor boleh tahu, oh siapa ni si Hanudin. Oh siapa ni si, uh, yeah, anyone else, right? So everything is uh, clear to the editor. And uh, simple, uh, and also more importantly, coming up with cover letter. Uh, kena bagi tahu lah cover letter tu kan, uh, but that cover letter should be specific, mentioning the name of the editor, uh, mentioning the name of the editor directly, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, uh, an example just now, right? I have uh, provided to all of you uh, regarding about the Q1 and this one, uh, International Journal of Ethics and System, uh, in which uh, before we are ensure we are able to understand about the journal, we have to familiarize, we have to read from A to Z regarding about the author guideline here okay tip number eight uh, familiar with peer review process uh, kenapa ini penting sebab kalau kita hantar artikel pada hari ini jangan kita berharap uh, satu minggu kemudian dapatlah dia punya maklum balas atau tidaklah puan-puan sekalian dia kadang-kadang tu enam uh, bulan uh, kalau was come to us but uh, if you're reaching about that six month And that six months, right? You can communicate directly to the editor. What happened to my manuscript? Ah, boleh. Ah, tak ada masalah. Tapi kalau hari ini kita hantar satu minggu kemudian kita tanya dia how about the status janganlah nanti dia panas. <laughs> Pengalaman tuan-tuan. Good journal offer good reviewer and good feedback. Ah, typically. Ah, but why we are waiting for the submission, right? Uh, do not waste our time. Uh, means sitting down once again, uh, try to write a new idea, uh, which means, as you can see here, write, write, write. So that will be ensuring we have the continuity of the talk. Uh, jadi kita boleh gunakan masa dengan syarat, masa itu kita tak sibuk. Kalau masa dalam dunia sekarang ni kan, kalau kita ada kuliah ataupun pengajaran penyelidikan, 
Ha, mungkin kita utamakan dululah pengajaran yang penyelidikan penerbitan ni uh, ada masa tu kita buat. So as you can see here, right, uh, good uh, good thing need times. Uh, biasanya lah dalam penerbitan uh, berbeza sungguh dalam konteks industri-industri uh, ni kalau boleh uh, dia buat action research uh, hari ini buat esok dapat itu industri. Tapi dalam dunia akademik tak boleh macam tu. Nanti yang dapat tu adalah hasil yang tak sesuai, tidak menggambarkan ilmiah. Kalau industri lain, industri more on the action research, but when it come for publication like this one, it will be more on the fundamental one. Okay, type of peer review as you can see here, uh, there are at least about uh, three, uh, three types. And the open review, whereby the two party here, the author review, uh, knowing each other, and the second one, single blind, either one, uh, knowing uh, with the author or the uh, reviewer. And then the third one is a double blind. Double blind is the best practice uh, by many uh, journal platform, including email publishing. So, well, there are two things. Uh, number one, objectivity. And uh, the second one is about conflict of interest. Because there was a time whereby there will be some sort of a dissatisfaction by the author. Uh, I mean, asking the, the, the editor why the review giving this a very negative comment. Uh, so in order to avoid this, the blind review uh, would be better to reduce the conflict of interest. The process, uh, ladies and gentlemen, will be like this, as you can see, right? And just try to capture, but uh, in more detail, it can be something like this. Uh, the road is a very long uh, beginning submissions and quality checking by the admin or the edit editor, editor assessment plus the quality check here. And then after all, the editor will be assigning the associate editor. And then the associate editor will be selecting. In my case, as an associate editor, I will be selecting five reviewers. Uh, but I will be choosing the best two. I will be choosing the best two. Sebab untuk membolehkan kita dapat hasil yang baik. Kadang-kadang ada pewasit ni beri komentar yang negatif. Ada yang beri komentar yang tidak begitu padu dan padat. Ada, ataupun ada yang memberi komentar yang bersifat uh, uh, sekejap ada, sekejap itu. Jadi tak bolehlah tuan-tuan. Sebab ini tanggungjawab dan amanah. So we have to consider a proper evaluation. A decision rendered and uh, the final one, whether accept, publish or revise will be under the hand of editor. Associate editor on the provide recommendation the one that will be providing the final verdict is editor. Or well, some say a uh, chief uh, editor, some say uh, editor in chief. Mana uh, mana sama satu. And uh, tip number eight: uh, when you receive the outcome, yeah, once again, if you're according to your own particular religion, but in my case, I click that particular link, right? Email. I will be saying Bismillah. Accept the outcome with good heart revise as demanded or the wise justify straight to the point be specific be assertive and persuasive no aggressive no defensive uh, jangan agresif kan kata pewasit tu uh, sila jelaskan uh, sila jelaskan uh, kenapa teori ini diguna pakai contoh tapi kita beri maklum balas eh sudah juga saya terangkan dalam anu tu dalam artikel tu kau tak baca ke jangan tuan-tuan Kalau dia tak lepas baca, tak lepas pandang, tak payah tegur macam tu. Hanya bagi nota, uh, already revised. Habis tu kita kasih highlight dia, kita kasih bold dia, bahagian tertentu yang dia terlepas baca tu, yang menunjukkan itu yang sebenarnya yang kita nak sampaikan. Macam tu saja. So, kalau kita tiba-tiba kita agresif kan, uh, terus kena chop tu. Sebab yang baca bukan seorang, ada lagi pewasit lain, ada lagi editor. So, we have to be very careful, right? It is about uh, etiquette. Ini tentang adaf dari segi memberi komentar dan sebagainya. If there is a need for clarity, contact the editor. Good editor will always help you. Ha, biasanya, ha, macam dululah kisah saya, saya terberikan dalam satu makalah. Management versus news, uh, editor dia berasal daripada Australia tetapi berkalana di UAE. Ha, memang dia banyak membantu. Pengalaman lah pada tahun 2006. Thanks the editor for his intention and referral for the time. Ha, kena, ni penting tuan-tuan. Thank you the, thank you to the editor, thank you to the, the referral for your time. Ha, ini penting sebab kita hargai masa dia. Bukan senang lah kan sebab kerja ni di hujung-hujung milik kita. Jadi kita bagi ucapan lah, thank you so much for the comment, thank you so much for your attention. Uh, tak susah tuan-tuan dan perempuan rendahkan diri sedikit dalam usaha untuk dapatkan ilmu. Uh, the thing will become better and better. 
So uh, this is uh, the example uh, revision I have made, right? Uh, feedback to the review. We have to ensure provide detail and precise feedback in the forms of table. Kena macam ni contoh lah. I have one, two, three, four. I have four, four columns at least. Uh, beginning number, the comment rendered, my feedback, and also the pages in both pagination. And as you can see here, right, there will be some sort of the column here mentions uh, at least about three things, comment, response. But the response here should be detailed and precise. I uh, cannot baca lah kan kalau kita collaborative ni, uh, ada kawan tolong baca lah. Kalau dia tak tolong baca kan, uh, paksa dia lah kalau tak mau juga. <laughs> paksa juga, dia mau juga tu nanti tuan-tuan dan tuan-tuan sekalian. Okay, uh, six reason for rejection uh, yang ni biasa berlaku. Bila artikel tu dihantar isu sensitif, contohlah kan uh, tentang uh, makanan halal dan haram tapi dalam konteks yang sensitif. Uh, itu yang perlu diberi uh, penekanan oleh penulis lah. Contohlah macam dewasa ini ataupun sebelum ini kan ada masalah tentang uh, apa ni coklat, coklat Cadbury, ada DNA babi ataupun Kinsey. Uh, isu seperti itu perlu diberi penekanan lah. Jenis but in more particular majority journal, uh, they don't deal with the sensitivity issue. Uh, kalau racism memang dia tak mau lah. Poor language, novelty is zero, poor conceptual framework, poor format and a wrong journal lah. Ni kadang-kadang kita hantar dekat journal, journal ni tak hargai kita. Tak apa tuan-tuan, hantar dekat journal yang menghargai kita. Mesti ada tu. Trust me and believe it, it happened to me. Okay, if the article is rejected, take this action. I listen to your favorite song or compose one if any. Relax kijal tu tuan. Jangan risau ini benda ni berterusan bahkan kita relax kijal. Dengar music, uh, music apa-apa lah ke Piramlu ke, lagu uh, Elvis Presley ke dan sebagainya mana-mana sahaja kan. Okay. Then revise if you have time. Then submit elsewhere. Ah uh, Ini saya buat. Uh, saya dapat artikel tu, saya artikel saya kena reject. Uh, tak apalah dia reject, dia tak suka saya. Uh, saya dengar lagu sekejap. Habis itu saya ada masa, saya revise, saya hantar dekat uh, jenis lain. Dan ini terbukti berkesan. Ada beberapa artikel tu yang kena reject, uh, saya telah terbitkan tuan-tuan dan perempuan menggunakan pakai pendekatan yang sebenarnya ringkas tetapi boleh mem memberi kebaikan untuk mengelakkan kita tertekan ataupun stressful. Okay, your work is published. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> the moment that you are in compliance with everything that I have shown to all of you, at the very differing uh, degree by Allah will, by our God will, your God, my God, then everything can be published at best. Yeah. Okay, tip number nine. After all, when your work is published, uh, do not uh, hide it. Jangan kasih sorok, tuan-tuan. Kongsi lah kan dengan kawan-kawan, dengan uh, sahabat andai, uh, dan yang paling bagus dewasa ini ada Facebook. Uh, kalau kita orang akademik ni lah kan macam saya, saya ada Facebook tapi kalau uh, TikTok ataupun Instagram tu hendak saya tahu tu tu. I don't have any that one. Facebook because I can communicate with my uh, mentor, my supervisor, my professor. So if I publish my article, just try to share that kind of things and then improving my own visibility and improving my uh, citations. So as you can see here, there will be some sort of particular message here. We publish our work to look better, not publish ourselves to look better. And you just try to say Alhamdulillah. And uh, last but not least, uh, tips number 10, our uh, future thinking, the thinking of new paper to be submitted to New Journal. Think to write the second one, third and so on support, continuity, improve visibility and recognition, keep it off. The journey is still ongoing. Uh, with that, I end my presentation. Thank you, and over to you, sister. Alhamdulillah, terima kasih kepada Profesor Maria Dr. Hanudin Amin atas uh, tips yang disampaikan. Ya, kita ada 10 tips yang telah dibongkarkan ya oleh uh, doktor pengalaman beliau sendiri. Okay, apa yang uh, dia telah amalkan dalam menghasilkan artikel berimpak tinggi dan uh, saya buka uh, soalan kepada peserta-peserta sekiranya ada anda boleh ajukan dengan tab di ruangan chat ataupun terus uh, anggapkan uh, mic anda dan uh, bertanyakan kepada doktor.
Oke, okay, ada suara yang ketua uh, bos-bos sekalian. Yang santai-santai sebabkan. Selamat pagi, dokter. Iya. Boleh pagi, saya tanya? Iya. Ya, uh, doktor, ya. Uh, saya ingin bertanya, contohnya kalau kita nak submit ke satu jurnal uh, dengan co-author kita. Jadi kebetulan co-author kita adalah dalam editorial board jurnal tersebut. Jadi kalau uh, sesetengah um, jurnal, dia ada board declaration like the co uh, the editorial can submit but some they didn't uh, letak dalam tu lah. Jadi uh, apa pandangan doktor uh, berkaitan isu ini? Terima kasih. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Beatrice. A very brilliant question raised just now. Okay, uh, before we are looking uh, at the submission, right, uh, the first thing that we need to understand, we are looking at the uh, guideline, the outer guideline, what considered to be a don'ts, what considered to be a do's. If available, the thing, something like that, for example, right, uh, the author and the editor board member cannot submit. So on that particular basis, what we can do, do not submit directly to the journal, but submit to the other journal. But if there is no a kind of a requirement, something like that, uh, Dr. Beatrice, what you can do, just try to submit. It is okay. Because some of the journal, for some of the journal, like in the case of email publishing, they are giving some sort of a green light, uh, uh, making sure that uh, the editor member, even they are part of that particular committee, right? But that kind of uh, submission will be controlled by the editor. That kind of the submission will be controlled by the editor. The editor will not be assigning the article to the associate editor. It will be controlling by the editor and the editor will be submitting directly to the reviewer for good control in terms about the quality. But in many cases, yes, it is to a certain extent, but if not possible here on the other hand, uh, if I already submit to that particular article, right? I mean, to the journal. So I have to ensure that there will be some sort of a distance between one particular year of publication to another. Boleh, tak ada masalah sebenarnya tu, Dr. Beatrice. Yang penting, uh, tiada larangan ataupun tiada rungkaian idea bahawa ianya dilarang untuk kita berbuat sedemikian. Sebab apa-apa pun dalam konteks pewasitan, ianya adalah telus dan juga teliti serta terperinci. Ya, yeah, itulah sebab sedikit perkongsian, Dr. Beatrice. Is it answering your questions? Yeah, okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Probably you can make a try, uh, Dr. Beatrice, right, by submitting to the, the email publishing. A uh, number of very good uh, reputed journal and also very good uh, index in terms of what Scopus as well as the WOS. Okay, I have also received this particular question, right, uh, by... Uh, Ya, bagaimana jika paper yang telah diterima dan diterbit tetapi jurnal tersebut discontinue the scopus? Adakah paper tersebut boleh dihantar ke jurnal? Okey, uh, telah diterima dan diterbit. Okey, dalam konteks ini, uh, dalam konteks ni kan, apabila artikel tu telah pun diterima dan diterbitkan dan bila mana dia diterbitkan pada tahun berkenaan, katakanlah pada tahun 2022, artikel itu diterima dan diterbitkan dan ada penjilitan, ada penjilitan. Atau payah risau. Bila ada penjelitan dan masa tu dia masih scopus, dia akan diletakkan dalam database scopus selama-lamanya. Selama. Melainkan kalau artikel tu ada masalah dari segi plagiarism ataupun publication concern whatsoever. But the moment the article is accepted by the journal and get published, that article will be under the scopus database. Ha, tapi apa-apa artikel kehadapan Kenaan dengan jurnal tersebut, dia tidak akan diindeks. Dia hanya pada tahun berkenaan sahaja. Ha, itulah kot. Okey, uh, nak tanya adakah penerbit uh, uh, nak tanya adakah penerbit diindeks dalam sama label seperti Scopus juga? Okey, very interesting. Huh? Very interesting question this one, right? ERA huh? and also a Scopus. So what I can share with you, this is uh, only my opinion to a certain extent, right? Uh, in terms about the acceptability in terms about the acceptability. But in my point of view, the ERA as well as Scopus from the same label to a certain extent. 
uh, to a certain extent sebab dia mencerminkan tentang kualiti, tentang kita punya situasi dan sebagainya. Tapi walau bagaimanapun dalam konteks uh, Universiti Malaysia Sabah dan konteks uh, pengantarabangsaan, kita lebih melihat dalam konteks corpus, uh, terutamanya untuk uh, kios ranking dan sebagainya. Jadi kalau kita boleh uh, cuba rungkaikan di sini, adakah penerbit di indeks dalam ERA sama label seperti uh, scopus juga, apa yang saya boleh telah di sini ada kesamaan pada satu titik dan nokta dia berpandukan ada sedikit liputan juga penerimaan negara-negara yang yang menerbitkan uh, artikel dalam jurnal-jurnal mereka. Uh, contohlah uh, dalam konteks uh, email publishing dia ada juga mengaitkan uh, scopus dan dia ada juga mengaitkan dengan ERA uh, era. Okay, uh, paper tu belum sempat masuk dalam database uh, baru publish dalam jadi kemudian jurnal tersebut discontinue sebelum paper Okey, dalam keadaan ini, okay, ada persoalan ni kan, uh, paper tu belum sempat masuk dalam database, uh, baru publish di dalam jurnal tersebut sahaja, kemudian jurnal tersebut discontinue sebelum paper uh, ada dalam database. Okey, senang cerita, senang cerita, kita hubungi editor berkenaan, suruh keluarkan artikel tu. Kita boleh minta, uh, kita boleh minta, kita boleh buatlah surat formal dan mengatakan uh, niat dan juga tujuan uh, kita nak keluarkan daripada uh, jurnal tersebut atas alasan ianya tidak lagi diindeks oleh Scopus. Uh, kita bagi tahulah uh, penjelasan. Sebab kenapa? Mungkin kita boleh kaitkan atas keperluan penyelidikan, atas keperluan universiti. Kita boleh perjelaskan seperti itu. Tak ada masalah, boleh juga tu buat. Sebab banyak dibuat uh, di peringkat satu negara ni bila mana artikel tu tidak sudah diindekskan, uh, kita boleh keluarkan. Ada satu negara tapi malas nak cakap lah kan sebab benda sensitif. Uh, jadi tak ada masalah tu. Uh, kita boleh. Yang penting kita hubungi. Uh, kita hubungi uh, ID tersebut keluarkan. Uh, tapi kalau dia tak bagi maklum balas uh, dah berbulan-bulan uh, dan kita nak terbitkan artikel tu dekat jurnal yang lain tapi sudah diterbitkan, uh, kita ada masalah di sana. Terutamanya apabila ID tersebut. Uh, untuk jenar baharu tu melihat indeks dari segi kesamaan berpandukan pada rekod tenetin. Uh, itu yang sebenarnya kita cuba hati-hati uh, juga. Cuma apa yang kita boleh rungkaikan di sini uh, dengan jelas uh, kita hubungi uh, menggunakan uh, surat formal atau very very formal letter to ask uh, the, the editor uh, to exclude the, the article. So then we can submit. Uh, itulah sebab sedikit. Okey, macam mana kita boleh kenali jurnal uh, yang dikira predatory kalau kita banding dengan Okey, biasanya kalau predatory ni dia punya pewasitan tu, tiada Kalau ada pun main tapuk-tapuk <laughs> Sekejap ada, sekejap tiada Ataupun kalau tidak tu dia kadang-kadang uh, Dalam jangka masa tertentu saya hantar artikel hari ini uh, Esok dia dah bagi keputusan, ada uh, artikel is accepted uh, Itu salah satulah indikator, yang kedua tu yang kedua tu, dia punya editorial member tu hanya sebagai boneka. Tak wujud pun. Cipta nama sana sini, letak profesor, letak doktor-doktor PhD. Tapi tak wujud tuan-tuan dan perempuan sekali lagi. Bila kita buat searching dekat Google Scholar, tiada nama dia. Ha, mungkin nama ciptaan. Ha, itu ha, yang kedua lah indikator. Yang ketiga tu, ha, bayaran. Kalau jurnal predatory ni ataupun predator journal ni kan, bayaran dia dalam lingkungan 300 US dollar, 500 ataupun 700 US dollar dalam lingkungan macam tu. Dalam lingkungan macam tu memang dia akan tetapkan bayaran dan bayaran ini bersifat tidak pasti. Contohlah pengalaman saya bila saya cuba buat experimental tu dia kata there will be no submission. Dia adalah submission fee. Oh, I'm very happy right they start to make the experiment. But all of a sudden the article is accepted then the editor Uh, Hanudin, please pay about uh, 300 US dollar. But then I'm asking again and again, uh, can I have invoice? Can I have invoice? So saya nak buat tuntutan kan dengan uh, RMC. Kasihan juga RMC kalau kita terbitkan artikel dekat jurnal pemangsa ni, uh, habis duit UMS kan. Memanglah kan. Uh, jadi bila habis duit UMS, uh, kasihan kawan-kawan lain tu yang menerbitkan dalam jurnal-jurnal berbayar. Tetapi boleh dipikirkan tidak predator. Dan lazimnya lah yang penting apa-apa pun konteks dia dari segi kualiti pawasitan. Dari segi kualiti pawasitan. Okey, ada plan tak untuk UMS to produce jurnal berindeks kopos? Ini biasanya kalau 
di UMS memang ada jurnal yang berindeks Scopus dan juga ada WS. Tetapi biasanya dikendalikan di peringkat jurnal tersebut. Dikendalikan di peringkat jurnal tersebut, editor dia dengan dia punya editor member, dia will be working together, submitting to the, the application directly to the Scopus management. Uh, dulu susah sikit lah tapi sekarang ni hantar saya macam macam dalam kes saya saya hantar uh, pada tahun 2000 uh, tahun 2020 2020 saya hantar uh, untuk penilaian tapi sampai sekarang belum saya terima penilaian daripada pihak Scopus uh, cuma pada uh, hujung tahun 2021 saya ada buat tindakan susulan dan uh, pegawai itu uh, memberi maklum balas uh, dalam konteks uh, penilaian akhir Harap-harap diterima lah tapi lazimnya, lazimnya ia ni dibuat atau dikendalikan di peringkat jurnal tersebut bersifat decentralized, bersifat decentralized. Melainkanlah kalau pada masa akan datang UMS mengubah polisi bahawa centralized untuk indexation dan sebagainya itu dibuat oleh penerbit UMS. Tapi buat masa sekarang yang terbaik adalah dibuat di peringkat jurnal tersebut. Tapi memanglah ada ada jurnal di UMS ni yang diindeks oleh Scopus WOS tapi kalau yang melibatkan ekonomi manajemen tu yang paling baik yang setakat ini kita ada adalah my site. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, any any more? Uh, ya, yeah, kita ada satu soalan yang terlepas pada awal tadi. Soalan yeah. dia APC dianggap sebagai funding kah? Perlu acknowledge? Yang uh, yang man macam mana tu Munira? Uh, uh, ulang sekali, ul ulang ulang lagi. APC dianggap sebagai funding kah? Perlu acknowledge? Yalah kalau macam kalau dalam konteks kita lah kan Munira and also the, 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 the person ask this question apa-apa uh, pun uh, dalam konteks tersebut bagilah penghargaan juga lah kan RMC dia bagi duit <laughs> Just uh, try to tell about the name uh, uh, Thank you to the RMC University Malaysia Sabah I have done that earlier uh, Saya buat tu sebab dia penat-penat bagi kita duit 400 kan <laughs> And then I just try to tak tak susah lah memang ringkas saja kan kita buat acknowledgement before the references after the conclusion. Uh, the acknowledge will be saying something like this. Thank you to the RMC of University Malaysia Sabah for sponsoring the uh, APC. Something like this. Full stop. Ah uh, tak ada masalah. Lebih bagus dan indah lah supaya pengurusan universiti pun rasa gembira, pengurusan jenat tersebut pun rasa benda ni berlaku secara uh, berhemah dan juga telus. Ah, itulah bahasa-bahasa sedikit. Ya, menurut saya ada lagi kata. Okey, rasanya soalan pun sudah tiada, tapi mungkin hmm. sekiranya ada peserta yang ingin bertanya lebih mendalam ya ataupun yeah. secara personal dengan doktor, yeah. ah, macam mana kita mau boleh boleh hubungi doktor? Nah, anu saya pakai saya punya email tu Hanudin ataupun nombor saya 0135555. Ah, oh, saya kasih kongsi lah bahkan. Ah, inilah sini saya kasih kongsi ah ni kan ah. Okey. Yes, ada tu. Saya cuba lah kasih kong sini. Saya type dulu. Okay. Okay, untuk yang bertanya berkenaan dengan predator journals, uh, mungkin uh, saya boleh kongsikan website yang kita boleh semak ya sama ada journal tu adalah journal predatory. Anda boleh type di Google's Bellis uh, Journal. Uh, Bellis website. So di situ anda boleh type apa nama jurnal dan anda boleh uh, tengok lah kalau ada jurnal tu ada pop up di situ. Artinya maksudnya uh, jurnal tu uh, adalah predatory dan kalau tidak ada artinya dia mungkin boleh boleh anda submit untuk uh, penerbitan. Ya, itulah betul kan. Um, yang betul lah tu apa ni uh, Munira. Yang ni lah uh, Munira berkenaan dengan nombor saya dan juga Hanudin at UMS edu.my ni lah dan kita ada juga nombor nombor telefon di sini. Jelas bahkan Munira. Okey, jadi yeah. uh, sekiranya anda ada soalan yang lebih yeah. detail ya ataupun lebih dalam yang mungkin tidak terjawab di sini anda boleh hubungi Dr. Hanudin Amin di nombor yang tertera. Okey, yeah. baiklah saya mengucapkan terima kasih kepada Dr. Hanudin Amin atas perkongsian tadi ya 10 tips yang telah dibongkarkan, yang telah diamalkan selama ini okay, dalam menghasilkan uh, artikel ber berimpak tinggi. Kata-kata uh, akhir daripada doktor untuk peserta pada hari ini? Tidak ada lah cuma tadi, uh, sorry lah kan ada teknikal. 
Tiga kali saya kasih restart baru okey saja. Tapi itulah yang saya boleh rungkaikan di sini. Uh, selamat mencuba dan selamat menerbit. Itu saja. Semua boleh menerbit. Tidak ada susah benda ni. Yang penting ada keinginan, ada objektif. Uh, Amal Tuhan uh, tolong kita apa apa yang baik tu dia akan tolong. Itu saja uh, Munira. Okay, baik, terima kasih. Uh, saya mohon persilakan untuk tuan-tuan dan puan untuk buka kamera. Kita sama-sama uh, bergambar uh, kenangan-kenangan untuk uh, sesi pada pagi ini bersama Dr. Hanudin Amin. Dipersilakan para peserta. Okey, baik ya. Dengan kiraan tiga. Satu, dua, tiga. Seterusnya, satu, dua, tiga. Doktor kita mau buka mas. Masih terbiasa kan? Rasa <laughs> macam lain macam bila tidak, tidak pakai mas tu. Ya. Yeah. Okey, teruskan. Satu, dua, tiga. Sekali lagi. Satu, dua, tiga. Ya, itu dia. Terima kasih sekali lagi kepada peserta dan terima kasih juga kepada panel kita. Tapi jangan berakhir di sini kerana kita ada satu sesi lagi bersama dengan secara satu lagi sesi bersama dengan uh, publisher daripada uh, pihak Emerald. Okey, apa uh, kata kita take five dulu dan kita akan kembali semula untuk sesi bersama dengan Mr. William Long daripada Emerald Publishing. Terima kasih. Kita kembali 11.55 boleh? Okey, terima kasih. Okey, baiklah. Uh, kita sambung semula sesi webinar untuk pada sesi yang kedua. Okey, uh, bersama dengan kita pada pagi ini juga ialah wakil daripada uh, pihak Emerald Publishing. 
Okey, uh, izinkan saya perkenalkan uh, beliau dan membacakan sedikit latar belakang. Okey. William Loh joined Emerald Publishing in 2019 as business manager. His responsibility is towards the business, sales and marketing in both Malaysia and Brunei markets. In the short three years in publishing industry, he has been actively engaged with faculty members and researchers around Southeast Asia. He has been invited for various collaborations together, for example, publication talk workshop for case writing, workshop for book publication, SDG projects, and as both speakers and session chair in multiple international conferences. The most recent project headed by William is the Emerald Young Researcher Award 2021. It is a regional award to acknowledge and celebrate the success of young researchers from the Southeast Asia region on their tremendous effort towards real impact research, impact, sustainability, and community engagement. So before we start uh, with uh, Mr. William, actually, uh, He's uh, representing uh, Mr. Elpins uh, because uh, he cannot uh, uh, attend at this moment. And yang bertanya tentang kehadiran, eh, kehadiran akan diberikan uh, di akhir uh, sesi ini. Dan saya mohon untuk peserta terus kekal hingga ke akhir uh, webinar. Dan uh, without further ado, let's welcome Mr. William Loh. Good morning. Um... A very good morning to all staff Seattle dan selamat pagi. Um, Munira, nak tanya dapat dengar ke tak William? Yes, clear Mr. William. Yeah, okay, all right, sure, thank you. Thank, thank you for checking. Um, <laughs> first, first of all, I, I, I nak ucapkan terima kasih kepada um, the committee uh, in inviting pihak Amoro ya. Yeah? Uh, Mula-mula tu Encik Alvin, kemudian tu Encik Alvin tak sempat. So I'll be I'll be placing Encik Alvin for this particular sessions. And and secondly, I will, um, I I deeply yeah, uh, would like to say thank you, a big thank you to Dr. Hanudin for his great sharing. I bought banyak bookshop. Uh, Dr. William, um, I myself actually done a lot of trainings workshops, uh, even as a speaker and also you know, a minor small judge's role in some conference level and so on. I'm not pulling uh, Dr. Hanudin kaki, I'm not pulling his leg, <laughs> but I, I would be like to say that his sharing tadi tu memang in depth, yeah? very um, in comparison with other speakers that I come across to, uh, his sharing is very um, uh, from his experience and also very in depth, lah, very in depth. Uh, in depth, sehingga ya, masa Dr. Hanudin tu for sharing, I keep changing my slide. <laughs> so, well, uh, uh, I, I would just want to say that mo mo most of the sharing and most of the, you know, uh, the, the sharing that we done by Dr. Hanudin pun dah covered dah by William. <laughs> I, I also do not know what I can share <laughs> for my particular sessions. Without further ado, I'll quickly you know, start my sessions. Uh, if there's any question, feel free to let me know. If not, uh, you, know, you can also voice uh, unmute yourself. I'll go and start sharing right now. Kejap um, you. Would you able to see my PowerPoint right now? Yes, Mr. William. Okay, all right, sure. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, for today's session, too, I will be um, touching on Guide to Getting Published from the Publisher Perspective. Dari this session, Penulisan dan Penelitian Artikel Berimpact Tinggi di Bidang Science Social. Uh, sesini, uh, I akan bagikan dia kepada dua bahagian. So the first session, um, uh, izinkan William to do a short uh, demonstration, uh, cara to navigate ya, ataupun cara nak menggunakan fungsi-fungsi, uh, contohnya advanced search di uh, emerald.com, uh, which is the emerald database. Ya, 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 ya ini bukannya user training ya, cuma William uh, ingin nak tunjukkan there are some 
um, uh, interesting, some unique way for us to do some um, uh, database searching. Yeah? Then with that, I'll move on to Sassy and Kudua, which is us uh, on the guide to getting published and also how to survive uh, the uh, peer review process from the uh, publisher perspective. Uh, fun fact. Fun fact, yeah. Uh, kalau tak tahu tu, uh, just to share with you, um, publication with Amuro is free. Uh, unless your article, you like your article to be an open access article. Uh, jika kalau tidak perlu, yeah. So publication with Amuro tu is actually free. You do not need to pay uh, the APC. Uh, there is no publication fees. Uh, to pay to publish in Amuro Journal, Amuro eBooks. Uh, and also Amuro teaching cases, yeah. Tak bayar kepada Amuro unless, yeah, uh, you publish in subscription journal and you would like your article to be in open access. So in Amuro, we only have one single read. Kita tak ada banyak category. Kita guna satu read je. Um, so the single read, which is pound, $2,495, dollar, $3,370, and euro, uh, 880 for the APC uh, for the uh, open access article is um, expensive, I know. Um, uh, however, in our region over here, kebanyakan kita tu tak perlukan APC. Yeah? There's actually no APC mandate. This is purely an optional um, if you like to do that. Oh, before we start, um, <laughs> uh, if you have seen William, uh, I mean, if you have attended uh, my previous session before, probably you will notice uh, William ni, mungkin budak ni, dia macam kelakar sikit ya. So, <laughs> so, so in terms of the online sessions, I probably would do something to to have some engagement. Uh, if I may, can I get everyone to go into the chat? I tak nampak pula chat ke mana. If you can go into the chat over here. If you can go into the chat, um, there are four options answered here. And the question is, uh, which country uh, is wider in terms of diameter? Minta maaf ya, diameter ya. Which country uh, the diameter itself is wider than our moon? So just to you know, uh, get everybody to um um apa tu? Uh, tak tidur lah, tak tidur sikit ya. So so which which country do you think that is in terms of diameter too is wider than our moon? Malaysia ke? Or perhaps Indonesia, which is, you know, in terms of the island, to memang banyak lah than Malaysia. Uh, Australia, uh, yang tu memang besar je. Ataupun India, which is, you know, also very big continent. Alright. Pink Pidaos was saying D, D from India, then D from India. Okay. So good. I, I think we have, um, you know, Pidawus, thank you for answer that. Anyone would like to give um, some guess? Suzali was saying Australia. Shariza was saying Indonesia. Interesting. Uh, another one, uh, Nordin is saying Australia. Nobody saying Malaysia <laughs> Mungkin Japan tu Malaysia kan? Ha? Ataupun tak mungkin. <laughs> okay, alright. Um, so, so, so that's just to uh, make some uh, engagement here. Um, uh, so, so which country is wider than our moon? The answer is uh, Australia. Australia is wider here in terms of diameter than our moon. The moon sits about 3,000 uh, yeah, kilometer, uh, 3,400 kilometer uh, in diameter while uh, Australia diameter from east to west is almost yeah, about 4,000 kilometer. Well, this is, you know, boy number two, Australia two, number two lagi besar um, in terms of diameter, uh, wider, sorry, wider than our moon itself. So, yeah, that is just to get everybody uh, hyped up. Um, now, let me quickly go into the emerald.com. Uh, yang sesi pertama I do, I will be touching on the uh, emerald.com here. Yeah? So, I'll um, so sharing to, are you still able to see my screen? Boleh kan? Right. I would also like to, you know, congratulate to uh, Dr. Hanudin, Prof. Hanudin here, yeah? that uh, in the short times 
from 2017 until today, which is almost about five years. Number of citations that the Google Bullet Radio, according to Google Scholar, you know, 3,000 plus for citations at each index have already been you know, at least 36 uh, since 2017, uh, 32 since 2017, which is which is which is a very great um uh accomplishment yeah which is a very 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 you know huge accomplishment I uh, just want to you know congrats to him congrats to you prof uh well done um keep up I I really like to hear your sharing I love to hear uh your sharing in the next sessions kalau boleh bila pun nak jemput ya ah prof Hanudin tu untuk ah sesi sesi workshop di bila nanti tu so if I may, I just want to quickly go into emerald.com. Uh, so this is emerald.com website. How can you uh, come to here? Go on here. How do I minimize this? Uh, how can I minimize this? So right, um, emerald.com, or I minimize it here. So emerald.com, I will zoom in. So over here, this emerald.com, you can basically um, access here yeah, emerald.com from UMS proxy, UMS library proxy. Uh, just now, uh, Dr. Hanodin too, I do here yeah, menunjukkan cara, -cara uh, to log into the uh, UMS uh, library uh, proxy here. Yeah. So, this is where you can uh, log into the UMS uh, e resources access. Uh, I totally agree with uh, Prof. Uh, Hanodin, Dr. Hanodin, tadi kata tu. Um, UMS uh, resources is actually really, really um, impressive, which is there's a lot of resources that you can make use, that can help you in your references and also in your teaching and learning. Uh, William, other banya go um, engage with other universities and other, you know, libraries and other resources. That's why I agree with him. I do see Tak banyak ya, university, university yang lain tu ada um, resources, resources se, uh, sebanyak uh, UMS. So this is absolutely true. I would like to um, agree to his say. So so thank you to the UMS um, university management and also thank you to UMS library to provide such a great resources to all. So once you log into UMS library, you can find Emerald. Lepas you dah cari Emerald tu, the first thing that you need to make sure tu adalah yang ini dia. Welcome here. So let me just zoom in, show you a bit bigger. So once you have go into Emerald uh, Insight, which is emerald.com here, the first thing that you need to check with, which is here, welcome. So if you to see welcome guest user, bermaksud you are not uh, being recognized. Emerald.com does not recognize who you are. You need to make sure that you say welcome University Malaysia Sabah UMS here. Yeah? You can make sure and do. Because currently I am at home, I'm currently at home here. Yeah? So that's why the Emerald does not recognize me in university. So it, come, it actually asked me as the, uh, recognize me as the guest user. So for me myself, I'll need to log into my staff profile. So once I log into the staff profile, probably you will see the great difference is we will say welcome my name here and it recognize me i am the uh, staff account so it will be the same thing from you if you were to go to the ums proxy once you have logged in lepas tekan emerald the first thing that you will see would be here welcome university malaysia sabah so once you okay all right so 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 once once you see that then you are in the good hand you double yeah uh, access to the uh emerald uh database here yeah? uh for emerald database i will cut short i can go through the user training i just want to um show to you that in ums ums has access to all uh emerald journal and also uh teaching cases emerald journal dan juga teaching uh, cases. I think you are very familiar with journal. I just want to touch a little bit here on teaching cases. Teaching cases is always tak di tak di apa tu tak di penting kan tak 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 di tak di umum ke. It's not being it's not being mentioned. Yeah? It's not being mentioned in most of the um uh, universities and also in other webinar. So uh, William myself, I would like to um i would like to suggest or like to uh 
uh, get every one year. Yeah, I think I need to to actually explore um Amuro, uh, emer emerging markets case study. Emerging market case study is a Scopus uh, index uh, case journal. Under this particular case journal, there are thousands over cases uh, that covering uh, from the emerging country. Johnton in Malaysia, Indonesia, South Africa, South America, right? So and so, uh, India and, and so and so. There are so many uh, case journal over here that you can have a look into. Um, so example, I want to go into Malaysia, just click on M, then you can search for Malaysia, give it a few seconds to refresh, then you will find that in Malaysia, example, we have 63 uh, cases here, kita ada 63 uh, cases di terbit here from uh, Malaysia sini too. So over here, these are the most recent one, Roadmap to Initial Public Offering, IPO, Yellow Heart, um, um, a Responsible Business uh, by Reducing Inequality at DG Malaysia. So this was published by Dr. Saha and also by Prof. Wan Nodin, both of them from uh, UUM. Prof. Wan Nodin has been a great uh, case writer and also case uh, teacher for many, many years. So, um, so many cases over here. Um, makin dirasa, makin terasa, mamat, uh, food um, by IUM. So, this one, the chicken egg story of call center in Malaysia. One of it, which is Dr. Ng, and also uh, Prof. Ho from UPM. So, example, right? Let's say I want to use this as an example. So, once, how can we use this? Um, so, so, as a teacher or as an academic, we can actually, um, the cases, are uh, basically uh, sorry, the cases has two uh, PDF my apology so example the chicken and egg story of a call center in Malaysia yeah uh, written by uh, PBS salmon UPM UPM and also UPM yeah so you will see that there is a case uh, story over here and there's also a teaching note over here the teaching note is only available for Teaching faculty member, wow, case is available for general and for students, for general and for students. So send the case to the students, ask the students to, to read before coming to the class. If you want, you can also divide your class into different uh, smaller groups, send them the case, send them the questions, ask them to you know, discuss on their own group, come to the class and present ke, ataupun discuss ke, you know, things like that. So for students, so students when read this, then they will know that, oh, there is, this case will provide me this learning outcome. So by reading this case, uh, I will, you know, learn to analyze issue. Uh, I will also learn to analyze problem uh, faced by call center in Malaysia. Uh, what is the root cause uh, faced by the call center employee? What is the alternative solutions to actually solve the problems to ensure the sustainability of the business? So this is like synopsis. So the complexity level, uh, complexity level here in Pusyapa. So example, it can be for moderate level uh, and also can be used for undergraduates. Um, cases most of the time has been used in MBA for the masters, for MBA, and even for PhD, DBA, dan sebagainya. And this is source code, which is to let you know that uh, you can use this for the HRM management, or the author will also tell you. So this teaching case, uh, they are targeting uh, for the um, topic or the subject area on employee commitment or employee motivation, uh, HRM, and also OB, yeah, organizational behavior. So once you say to them, then this is where the uh, start of the case, the students can read this, teacher, you yourself will and definitely require to read this, read, 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 and read. So this is something like reading a story, but inside the story, there are problems, there are probably some solutions, and, um, and and you know the, 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 the students can actually relate um, the syllabus that they are learning uh, with uh, the company uh, that they know of from Malaysia. Contoh macam DG, yeah? Telecom Malaysia, KPJ, or you know, McDonald's, KFC, they can relate like, all these things. So this is for students, as I mentioned, and um, another one which is teaching notes. Now, what is teaching note? Teaching note is 
only, only and only available for teaching faculty member. Students tak boleh download ni. So once you have the teaching note, um, you yourself will also have your teaching note in your synopsis where it also tells you what uh, these stories is about from the author perspective. And you as a teacher, you will know that uh, what is what what do you uh, expected to you know teach here yeah, or you know expected to share uh, the particular so the learning outcome for the students so the students you know using the case uh, you know should uh, be able to learn analyze the issue and problems to determine the root cause to have alternative solutions and who is this for and what what are these you know courses can be used in OB, in HRM, in also other training and development uh, courses sugar. What I like the best about Teaching Note Yela, uh, Teaching Note will also include the discussion questions. <laughs> this is the best. La. So, so the discussion question example, some will have like three questions, some probably have four, some even have even up to six or seven here. Yeah? discussion this discussion questions so the author will provide will will bring up these discussion questions example as i mean the issue or problems faced by call centers in malaysia very simple you know very simple question and these questions you can send it to the group of students and get the students to you know after you have read the case ah tell me yeah tell me present in powerpoint ke, ataupun, you know, a point a presenter can tell tell me uh, what are the uh, issues and what are the problems uh, faced by the uh, call center. Then another group, uh, you know, following up from the question number one. So what 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 uh, how do you analyze uh, the root cause of the issue uh, experienced by call center? You know, something like that. So if the teaching note have questions, the teaching note will also have the answers. So example, so this is the uh, case analysis and you will have the uh, answers from here, right? So this is a case case analysis, uh, analysis for A, which is Q1 or on here. Normally, it will written down the Q1 or Q2 on the questions. Uh, relevant theory, so and so, and all these are the answers. Equity theory, alternative, my apology, um, actually this is my first time to actually have a look into that. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that you will see this should be answering, this should be answering the problem identification. I think, yeah, this should be the answer for here. So do as, as a means um, and also to identify the problems and issues over here. So it should provide the answers from the author perspective. So you already have the question, and you also have the you know, answers. Uh, you probably you know, see how well the students have discussed, how well the students have covered. Is it extensive or is it something that you can add on? You know, these things like that. Another one very interesting part, which is called the uh, teaching plan. Teaching plan simply you know, lets you know that uh, in one and a half session, what one and a half hour session, the last jam tickable minute to uh, how do you approach which this uh, teaching note uh, five minutes uh, if you want to show youtube ke, uh, yang pun boleh, yeah? um, uh, to show that then 20 minutes to discuss about the question number one 20 minutes to discuss the question number two uh, it can be in the same group or it can be in the different pairs dan sebagainya all in all this is only suggestions um it can be used in many um you know many uh, ways it can be in the group discussions. It can be also in the project assignment. I've seen that uh, academics using that in the semester break and send the and send the questions as the uh, project assignment here, yeah? project assignment to them. So this can be used to that. Some even use this in their uh, examination as well. But all in all, you know, this is only a facilitating a facilitating a piece of um, resources that definitely able to help you with the uh, teaching and learning. So that's actually all from, 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 uh, no, it's from the emerald.com site, not from my sharing. Just want to show it to you on here. Uh, another one part that I would hope to take five minutes more to just um, introduce to you. 
uh, in most of the database and most of the students here, yeah, kalau I masuk workshop-workshop when I was with many speakers, uh, I don't know, most of it will be using uh, Google uh, as a means to find resources. Ataupun discovery uh, by university, contoh macam UMS, yeah, at the discovery system, when you type the keyword, you come up the result. All this is good. There is no but. I cuma nak tambah satu and here, and here. Please continue to do that. Um, if you are in the emerald.com or if you are in other publisher with your database sugar, you can actually explore this another way. Um, so, so just to give you an example, what it what is the difference here? Yeah? So, example like this. So, we can type in a keyword. Contoh keyword, uh, let's say Islamic marketing. Contoh yeah, Islamic marketing, if I were to type that, then you will see, you know, it will have the search results, sebanyak berapa, and so and so. Uh, it will come to you, uh, buku from uh, Dr. Dilip Muntung, I think from Ketin, uh, Ketin uh, Sarawak, uh, Empirical of Islamic Marketing, uh, 10 Years of Journal of Islamic Marketing, oh, 10 years, uh, Bibliometric Analysis, dan sebagainya. You, you get this idea, this is the normal uh, key in your uh, keywords, and the can enter to have the result. Yeah, this is the normal one. Uh, but if in your teaching and study, I mean, when um, I also need your help to, to, to share with your students on, on how to find you know, contacts. I'm not too sure would you do this, uh, but in some college university, the manner when they teach about OB, example, when they teach about organizational behavior, I think there are two, there are four uh, theory for the OB. I dah lupa dah apa empat theory tersebut tu. Um, I, I was teaching that as well. Four theory of OB. Um, they can teach all the theory. They can explain all the theory. But how do they relate with Malaysia context? How do you do that? So you can actually find advanced search. Go to advanced search over here. From here, you can actually type in the keywords that you want. For example, let's say organizational behavior and analysis. From here, change here, change. Instead of all few to change, you can change to either title or you can change to also abstract. But because this is so um after so 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 niche, I will keep this as the all few. Over here, I'll add another row. Uh, over here, I'll keep this N, and from here, I'll put in Malaysia here. Yeah? You can see Unit 10, UMP, uh, and other. So I pin Malaysia. So instead of all few, I will change this to country filter. Now, what am I doing? I am basically doing keyword search on organizational behavior analysis, and uh, the author here, yeah? uh, the contributor, the author for the journal, author for the book, uh, the, the author for the case is from Malaysia. Uh, ataupun nama dia lah, nama dia ataupun institution tu ada Malaysia here. So if I were to do this particular search, so what do you expect? You should, you know, expect things, uh, this organizational behavior analysis. Um, so example this lah, I just take this as an example. It's very, very new. Uh, April 2022. So from here, you can see that uh, the title which is employee ecological behavior among academics here at the workplace and who are they they are from umt from umt from umt from uit m Shah alam and also from umt here which is published in social responsibility journal now with that in mind then you will know that this particular search will give the student a context where they will learn about ob and they can find context of these particular uh, resources, either article, ke, research article, ke, literature review, ke, ataupun book ke, from Malaysia. Uh, yes, sometimes they bukan from Malaysia. Sometimes it's co-author. It could be from, uh, example, it could be from Pakistan, uh, or it could be from Japan. It could be from, you know, uh, China or India and from Australia. The topic, you can see that um, the probability of the context probably will be coming from the uh, Malaysia itself. Example like this, probably you see, you know, um, um, it, obviously we already mentioned about uh, Malaysia and so and so. so. So now, how does this actually help the student? So this actually helps the students to understand better about the cost 
about the theory that being teach and using the context from Malaysia to actually understand that even better. Uh, people like me or you know like you were able to link if we can understand better, right? When, when we know something better, then we understand better. Uh, if I will mention, uh, what do you see in the moon? Uh, apa yang you boleh you, you, you nampak kat moon? Uh, we, we cannot we cannot think about it, we can only imagine sebab tak pernah tengok kan, tak pernah tahu. But if I can say that uh, in McDonald's, what can you order in McDonald's? Then probably you, you, you know, you can order Happy Meal ke, you can order French fries ke, uh, you, you're able to relate that. Same thing if you're teaching uh, OB. So if you're able to relate to you know, Malaysia context and things like that, this probably will help. I hope it will help these students to understand that better. All right, so basically that's um, that's just to give you an idea on that. Uh, because of time, I am probably going to release, um, go through very, very fast. I mean, ma af year, uh, go through very, very fast with my slide. Uh, I'm not going to talk about MRO. You can have my slide. You will you know, get to know about MRO more. MRO is a UK-based um, publisher. This is our team in Malaysia. I am very... Uh, um, very very proud and I got the damn proud lah. I'm very very proud uh, that in Malaysia we have high uh, number of author and also editorial compared yeah, with other developing country Malaysia is one of the top uh, developing countries that have high uh, authors this is very good news that actually shows that um, many of Malaysians here publish in you know MRO and also in top tier journal, yeah. So something that I also wanted to uh, take this opportunity to say thank you. Uh, I, I, our team we just came back from Sabah uh, last week. Some of you, if you are in here, uh, if you have joined the sessions again and again and again, uh, we we really appreciate your time, and we thank you for you all to join. It, it was a very wonderful sessions. Uh, in uh, UITM, uh, Sabah, yeah, UITM and KK, uh, and we had quite a number, of, we have, I think we have two sessions in the morning, which is the auto-focused group with our Emerald Ambassador, and afternoon there is a session on publication, which is uh, with me over here, talking about that. So this is, um, our team was up researchers for success, so we have um, a few uh, of interactions, we really appreciate uh, your comments, your inputs, uh, telling us your experience, telling us, you know, your feedbacks, uh, your comments. Uh, attendees are coming from the UITM and also from UMS. Um, really, really, you know, thank you to you all. And we ended up with, uh, with the community and we all, you know, very, very thank you uh, for, for you all to join us. We hope to be there again. Uh, probably not this year, but we definitely would like to, you know, be back again. Uh. Yeah, on that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, uh, slightly some things to share with you all. Um, also with the uh, library, if there's um, a library, the management, uh, you know, the RMC, if you're in here, not just for the uh, lecturer, about UNC Malaysia Sabah and also MRO. You can see that the total usage is actually okay. It's about 50,000 uh, per year uh, basis. Kalau kita nak compare, tak boleh nak compare UITM lah. UITM is a bit different, but if you have to see an example from UTM, probably the usage is about uh, 80,000 80, per year, 90,000 per year here. Yeah? But overall, this is a very, very healthy you know, usage that coming from the subject area on accounting, finance, economic, business management strategy. Um, um, there are a lot of um, downloads um, over here. This probably shows that the, the students, the academics, um, they, they, they should get the um, probably the research required um, and probably, you know, the faculty is asking the students to also, you know, read more about that and, and so marketing. So these are the uh, top. I am very happy uh, to see there are a lot of uh, authors, you know, coming from UMS itself. You can basically see that, you know, authors uh, from the accounting business, from marketing, uh, 28, 14th are uh, from the property, Malaysia and built environment. Hey, sorry. Public policy, my, my apology, public policy and environmental management, 14 of them. So you know, thank you for 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 publish with MRO. We, we hope that um I, I, I know it has been difficult. Uh, most of the audience, they can put William, they can 
eh kenapa selalu kena reject <laughs> publish in MRO I I I pun tak boleh nak I pun tak boleh nak cakap apa benda I cannot say anything I just you know just say that thank you for you know consider to publish in MRO uh, I just hope um and hope you can you know uh, resubmit again and hope the journey has been smooth uh hope that you actually learn and also you have improved you know something into that um amoro you know um the rejection rate is high um it's also very similar with um publisher the big publisher out there like Taylor and francis Alsevius, viley their rejection rate is also you know similarly high yoga uh, we do not want to compare with the open access journal out there it's about um we, we has been the big publisher like us um or you know the international publisher us has has the obligation and also the responsibility to maintain at that point improve yeah uh the article to review the article to be the best or you know at least you know high standard article so that it can help the journal ranking as well so if you are able to publish in MRO, you know in big journals the top rank journals out there like uh doctor um uh like doctor hasinudin just hanudin sorry hanudin just mentioned um it, you should be very you should be very proud of yourself be proud of yourself this is this is really true especially if you got into q1 journal be very very proud of yourself um ums has access as i mentioned to the emerald journals over here so i am you know very happy for you all not all Public, not all year. I want to say again, not all public university in Malaysia has all the access to a uh, Emerald Journal. UMS has. So I just want to say uh, thank you uh, to UMS management and library for the support to provide the resources to academic. You are able to access to all the subjects collections here from public policy to business to tourism, marketing, HR, operation, logistic quality, accounting, finance, IT property management, good environment, health and social care, education, library studies, and also engineering. UMS has also access to emerging market case study, which I have you know, just now showed it to you. Uh, this has not been used quite often, uh, which is understandable. Um, part and parcel, kita pun salah, kita pun tak, 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 uh, or we did not we, we probably may not have done a lot of training on this part we recognize that and moving forward we'll do more you know workshops and do more uh, interesting um uh, knowledge about the how to use the case study in classroom and how to write uh, teaching case studies as well publish teaching case studies and moral uh, is indexed in scopus so a very incentive for uh, these scholars as well Ebooks as well. If you have intentions to publish a digital book, uh, please consider Amuro. Publish ebooks in Amuro. Same thing. You do not need to pay. Tapun abaya. And uh, ebooks in Amuro is also here yeah, indexed in Scopus. Also indexed in Scopus. So another incentive to publish uh, ebooks in Amuro. This is our latest uh, product, which is called the Amuro, uh, which is called the Oxford Analytica, which is a peer reviewed. Um, um, peer reviewed, uh, what call that? Um, uh, social, uh, ecological, um, uh, news is about the politics of today. It's about the war of today. It's about the trade war of the day. It's about a country, you know, struggle the Southeast Asian, uh, issue struggles, the, the sustainability, the SDG, and things like that. This has been widely yeah, used in the government uh, of all the world uh, today, US, even Malaysia, yeah, UK, Australia, Punguna, Oxford Analytica for their policy makings, for their, you know, to, to, to know what, to strategize what, what policy that they need to actually implement for, you know, current issue, for the upcoming issues and things like that. So this really helpful if you are in the policy making or if you are in the um, yeah, policy making uh, area or you know, subject area. Um, because of time issue, uh, what time right now? 12.34. I quickly just go through some of these things. I may not have time to talk about book and teaching cases. If you have any if you have any um, uh, interest on publishing in book or publishing in teaching cases, please reach out to our librarian. Our librarian will be able to connect uh, to 
the MRO team here, we can uh, organize another session, just talk about book, if you're interested in book, or just talk about uh, teaching cases here. But there are four different revenue that we can actually publish in MRO. Three of them, you do not need to pay. Again, I would like to you know, say again, you do not need to pay to publish in to publish your article in journal, MRO journal. You do not need to pay to publish uh, an edited book uh, in MRO. You also do not need to pay to publish uh, teaching cases in MRO. However, you will need to pay APC uh, to publish in our new platform, which is called the MRO Open Research. I do not have time to explain. Uh, however, MRO Open Research is for the uh, is targeting on the SDG, targeting on the SDG um, sustainabilities and also policy makings uh, research article. All the articles, um, policy brief, um, and you know many all the research that being published over here is actually free to download, free to read. You can actually read and download from that. Um, it, it's actually targeted on very specific sustainability SDGs and policy makings, so that the um up to the the policy maker, the government, they can actually come to our MRO Open Research and and read and understand more about this and probably make use of this in their policy making as well, right? And let me just quickly go to the journal. I may probably want to skip this. Uh, part, but I just wanted to say that in MRO, we have almost about 310 journal, um, more than 200 is actually in Scopus. Um, we have 309 journal, uh, more than 300 is actually in uh, index in Scopus, 92 in JCR, 201 in ESCR here. So probably over 95% of our journal is indexed and in Scopus, at least uh, Q4, uh, then a majority, majority of our, our journals are actually in uh, I think 30 over percent is in Q1. Majority of them are actually in Q2 and Q3, right? Except for the new journal or newly, you know, uh, indexes that will be in Q4. Um, these just some of the examples, like in business project strategy, uh, it will have 54 journals, uh, my apology, 54 journal that covers all the topics about business perspective, uh, business ethic and law, family business, international business, the management, the strategy, and all these things. And example, like there are about 50 uh, or 54 journals are indexed in Scopus. You know, this is just to give you an example. So more and more example, accounting that covers the accounting, the Islamic finance, fintech, Sukut, bond, uh, what else? Accountability, uh, financial crime, money laundering, if you are in this particular area, right? So you can also look into that. Big data analysis, e-commerce, so and so, so and so. Sorry, e-commerce can be in here. E-commerce also can be in IT, yeah? Can be in IT. So in marketing, well, marketing, we do not have many. I think the first one, the, the, the first, uh, the, the, the number one marketing journal, I think it's a journal of marketing uh, that we are serving as a here, the number one journal in the world. So 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 in um in Amaro, our marketing journal tak banyak, 23 journal here. But you can see that most of our marketing journal has been in the at the top 10 or at least in the top 20. There are a few lah, tak banyak lah, kalau compare dengan Elsevier's or maybe Taylor and Francis, you yeah, and so. But in marketing, you see all about the marketing perspective, uh, including uh, Islamic marketing, they are branding, uh, um, and so and so so and so. Um, my apology, accounting also includes Sharia, yeah, Sharia, Islamic bankings, uh, and also you you can see this context from the Malaysia itself. There are a lot of Sharia um, implementation, Sharia law implementation, Islamic banking, up to policy implementation, uh, Malaysia ni, yeah? these are all the context from Malaysia. Same thing from the marketing, Islamic marketing, Islamic branding, um, Islamic up to promotion and things like that from the Malaysia, from the Indonesia perspective. Uh, if you have if you know who is Dr. Hiram, Dr. Hiram Ting, I think he had went to UMS for a workshop early of this June. Uh, he's one of, he's our first and also one of our Emerald Ambassador. 
um, he's currently the editor in chief uh, for Young Consumer Journal. Yeah, Young Consumer Journal. So Young Consumer Journal, which is very interesting, talk about the uh, younger generation's behavior, the consumption behavior, uh, their um, their, uh, yeah, behavior, mentality, and so. What I actually like best, not only on Young Consumer, but another journal, which I you know, forgot the journal name, uh, they talk about. Uh, they talk about apa tu? They talk about um, uh, they talk about the uh, online game. Online game. Probably we are too old lah. Huh? Uh, if if you know about Dota, like playing Dota ataupun Mobile Legends, or I tahu Dota dengan Mobile Legend je. I do not know what else. <laughs> uh, I did not play on both of them. I've tried it before, but I'm too old. But my hand cannot move. <laughs> my hand cannot move as fast as the game. So that's why I fell up. I don't that mind here after two two times, two times very bad attempt. I don't that mind up. But I'm trying to say is that uh, the younger generations when they play the mobile game or the play the desktop game, you can also see those uh behavior of games playing and sorry behavior of the uh spending. Yes, uh how 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 the millennial uh spending on the uh, spending on the Online game, ah, uh, example like Dota, Mobile Legends, ah, uh, kenapa mereka nak buy apa tu skin lah, buy item lah dan sebagainya, which which is a very interesting you know read to me. I untuk I lah, I suka baca you know benda macam itu, which is very related and also fit into the research gap in the current situation. It may not be a problem, but it is a good research gap to fit in. Yeah. So, so you know, these are some things interesting to let you know. HR learning organization and studies all about HRM, all about OB, all about career. Uh, and I think about bullying. Uh, bullying to apa? Uh, uh, bullying, uh, bullying, workplace uh, bullying over here. Um, gender uh, inequality and, and so and so. Psychometric point are the uh, IT, yeah, information and knowledge management about IT. About big data, uh, IoT, capacity, I guess, which is over here, IoT, 5G regulations, uh, online adoptions and online purchases, uh, big data, uh, I think I mentioned that uh, earlier, and, and things like that. So, so this is just to give you an outline of what all these things you know, available. And you can see, not that many. Uh, we, Emerald is a medium sized uh, publisher. Kita bukannya, um, big as our, our survey. People got uh, I mean, the big publishers they have more than one thousand journal, even some like five thousand journal. Ah, uh, kita hanya tiga ratus journal je. We are, we are very small. <laughs> uh, you can see, but but our journals even though are small, but very very niche, and most of them are also uh at least here yeah, index in Scopus, also on the way to ESCI or SSCI. Some of them are also in ABDC, uh, indexing and ranking as well. So I'll leave this to you all. I'm not you know, going to uh, really talk about it. Uh, because again, on the time issue, I just quick, quickly touch on a few highlight things. Um, I will not want to talk about this. I would like to talk about impact. Um, in MRO, uh, we believe impact. Very similar with uh, Dr. Hanudin, where we actually uh, share about uh, his journey on publications, uh, how to actually pick journal, how to aim the journal. It's very important. I cannot stress, I cannot agree, and I cannot also stress uh, 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 Dr. Hanudin uh, mentioned earlier. Please, please, please understand the journal that you are targeting. Please understand the journal targeting. Please read the journal aim and scope to journal descriptions. Uh, and if possible, read a few of the articles uh, from the Previous issue understands what are they trying? What are the articles that has been successfully published? Is there any research gap that is significant implications? You know in, uh, that you can actually pick up from there. That will actually help you to write yeah a very good uh, manuscript. Um um that is you know just to echo back to uh Prof Hanudin Yang tadi sharing tadi two year. Uh, over here I just want to say in MO we believe your research matters um not only it helps in terms of the career in terms of the promotion in terms of the recognitions the topic it helps the society uh, some people example dr hiram i would like to say again um he has less and less uh, publication there 
uh, he's focused right now are doing more project community, you know, project, uh, social work and, and so and so because he believe uh, the research provide impact to the society and that impact would help the societies to become better, uh, probably, you know, uh, better lifestyle, ke, better uh, living standard, ke, you know, more job opportunity ke, dan sebagainya. Uh, I believe uh, Dr. Hiram, I also believe with what uh, Amuro have this vision, which you call the impact. So, you know, to let you know that when you identify your research, when you have started to write, start to data gather your research, once you have submit and hopefully pass your peer review and got into publications, uh, Prof. Adikato, you have to also uh, share in your Facebook. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm also the same thing. I put the other uh, Instagram, I put the other TikTok. <laughs> Me, my best phone, Facebook, uh, if not, is uh, LinkedIn. My LinkedIn is terrible. I don't update LinkedIn iPhone. <laughs> uh, but Facebook at least uh, here. So, so you can promote in the Facebook. So this is something that to promote. Uh, but you can see, after you can see other Bunya um, tips here, when they talk about promotion of the article, they talk about promote in Facebook. They talk about promote in social media. You will hardly see you tak nampak ya and moro talk about promote in facebook or promote in social media you will see more uh and more talk about promote your research impact in facebook tetapi about what your research matter uh, kenapa, kenapa your articles talk about this particular research and how this research can help um the society you know or help your student perhaps can help the university and, and so and so it's not just about uh, download and citations over here, but it also showcase um, your name, your research, yeah, your capability in this industry, at the point in your field, in your disciplinary, um, that you you bukan sekadar nak publish here, tapi you you look forward into that. You hope that your research can help to achieve uh, SDG nine plus, SDG two plus. You will hope that your research could actually help to provide a better um, landscape for the uh, KK side, a uh, better landscape for, um, example, for Sampona, example, you know, and so and so. So this is actually where we, we are today. Yeah? Uh, again, time issue, Um, uh, if you want to know what is impact, impact is about benefit of the research in the real world. Yeah, in, in, in the real world. You bukan sekada uh in the journal itself it's not just helping the journal to improve the scopus at the point improve the impact factor the tapi we are looking into the benefit itself why why the sciences bunya scholar why they do research on during covid 19 uh sciences mere scholar contohnya medical yeah medical they do research on covid 19 because to help to reduce, you know, mortality rate, to help to reduce the infection rate, uh, probably to also uh, improve um, how to wear masks. Uh, I, I did mention, scanning masks too much, 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 too many design of masks, banyak sangat masks. Uh, so, so, so from the normal surgical, nanti apa, three ply, then four ply, uh, then apa to KN la, nanti KF la, I don't know lah. So, you know, the efficiency of different masks, all these things is thank you. Yeah, thank you to the uh, researcher. Thank you to all the scholars. And all this is what we mean by the benefit of the research that help the real world. It is not just about publication. It's not just about improving the uh, journal impact factor. Yeah? Um, most of the research has been done in university. So the soalan tu nak tanya, who is reading? Most of the time, the person that reads your article pun from university. <laughs> Probably your dean, uh, your colleague, ataupun your student, yeah. Uh, does the leader in the, you know, uh, kampung kampung, does the uh, uh, dato does the political a, a, a politician, does they actually read uh, uh, your research or you know the research that public outside? Uh, most of them do not lah. Most of them do not. Uh, so that, that's actually why we feel that it's important for us together to break down this particular wall, yeah? to break down this particular wall. We want to bring the research 
uh, to the society so that the effects can be felt uh, in that way. Right, so um, um, uh, as I was mentioned earlier, I did a lot of um, marketing, sorry, uh, workshops and also, you know, conferences and things like that. I just received this when when I was uh, attending to Dr. Hasinuddin, actually uh, Hanuddin, uh, Dr. Hanuddin tadi uh, sharing to him too. Ada banyak dia pun WhatsApp bagi William. So this is um, uh, just to share with you uh, one of the biggest, if not, you know, the biggest uh, conference on tourism, uh, international conference on responsible tourism and hospitality um, um, that would be held on 1st and 3rd September. I will be there physical. Prof. Ramaya will be there, definitely Prof. Chia, Joseph Chia from uh, Joseph Chia, uh, from, ja uh, from Japan. Yeah. Uh, we also have Sharon Parkinson uh, from uh, UK, Emerald UK, that, that should, will be joining us into that. So um, if you are able to make it, please join us physically in a coaching. It will be held on 1st and 3rd of September, USSI Hotel Coaching. I'm not, I'm not doing promotion here. I just wanted to share with you, saying that, you know, these are some things that Emro is also, you know, supporting that, uh, specifically on the uh, responsible side. If, you know, it touches on the uh, SDG, sustainability, responsible management, uh, responsible tourism, uh, these are something that Emro has, um, you know, keen and 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 would you know do our best to support in in into that so it's not just about uh, publications but it's also to showcase about real impact stories um and, and so so uh, i do not know what, how should i actually continue from here because of time issue uh, i just wanted to share that you can have my slides i will probably share that with the committee after this you can have a read into that so in this this basically has been has been also shared here by uh, Dr. Hanudin tadi tu. Dr. Hanudin make a terrific, memang memang terrific job in sharing his experience, how to find a journal, you know, how to write the journal into that. I, I myself, hanya ada teori je. <laughs> so this is, this is a theory, you know, that the, the theory that we have been using, the theory that we have been sharing and all. And Dr. Hanudin has the experience, which is, I really appreciate that. So uh, that is about, you know, how to find the journal, how to actually write a journal, and what makes a good paper. Just now, Dr. Hanudin have shared the tips, um, uh, like Munira tadi kata, the 10 tips can shared by uh, Dr. Hanudin. So, 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 yeah, not only the 10 tips, uh, but also under the 10 tips itself, uh, Dr. Hanudin also shared about what makes a good paper, what does the editor and what does uh, 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 the reviewer uh, is looking forward to. He talked about his experience on the uh, originality and value, you know, the new things, uh, what the, the journal is looking for, the editor is looking for, the hot topics, how he used the um, scopus, uh, to look for the uh, journal and the issue. Uh, he also showcased the Tunitin, yeah? how to use the Tunitin to uh, do the referencing and citations. Like tadi, minta maaf here. Yeah? Um, there are so many things that you share. I, I, tadi, I do tulis. I tak sempat tulis habis tu. Yeah, but, but I really, really like to, uh, your sharing, I would definitely like to rewatch again on uh, your sharing later. So, like, example, in Emerald, we always talk about originality and value. So, editor, editor and reviewer always look about these things, extension of knowledge, research methodology, you know, does it actually have a valid and um, objective? Is it, um, does your argument itself, you know, um, sound logical and so and so, right? Um, the only thing that I would like you all to uh, look into. So this is how to structure your paper, how to use the title, the keyword, how to write introductions, the chapter one. I think chapter two is literature review. I think you can do this even better than me. Yeah? Chapter three, which is on the methodology, results, discussions. If you notice, if you notice, most of the top journal up there, most of the author, yeah, they are way in writing their manuscript, there's, they do not spend, they do not spend many words in chapter one, two, and three. They do not, they do not spend many, many words to explain about problem statement, you know, to actually refer or cite the 
um, uh, apa tu the, 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 the literature review ataupun they do not spend many words to explain what is this method is all about and why do they use this method they, they do justify but they do not you know spend many of their words in, into that so if you are able to do that please you know from here onwards try to read more of these top tier um, articles how do they write probably we can mimic you know we can we can do that most of the journal especially the top journal up there that they, they would want to hear your thoughts you know your discussion more they want to know more spend more time on to hear i remember dr hafiz hanafia from uitm uh shah alam uh punja alam ma punja alam when he, he say that um uh he has been published for so many years right uh he said that he can spend one day ataupun two jam here uh just a few hour he can quickly finish chapter one two and three one two three uh one day uh, kau team. Uh, uh do not need to spend so much but he spent months uh, and months right to just write about the discussion math to write about the discussions where the discussions are uh, to write about the discussions uh, the results the discussions and how does this actually make an impact uh and how does this make you know a difference and in, in the research itself so so if you may please you know focus more on the uh, discussion itself i just wanted to share and some highlights into that i, I know my time is almost up i just want to uh, say uh, this particular um uh which is the peer review site uh dr hanudin just now have also talked about the peer review what is peer review single blind double blind into that i'm not going to talk about it dr hanudin has a, a chat just now very nice very nice chat uh talking about the peer review process i'm also not going to talk about it because it's very very same thing it's a similar thing what i wanted to just add on here yeah, add on to dr hanudin is that if you may please uh include uh, a cover letter when you do a submission include a cover letter yeah in, so so when you submit the time probably most of us will encounter the desk rejection Desk rejection simply means that it does not even go into peer review uh. the 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 technical reject the technical reject at the at the at the gate lah, at the gate to the gonna reject lah. so normally that's what we call desk rejection or technical rejection uh, probably about 60 70 percent 60 to 70 percent even up to 80 percent of rejection happens over here which is the uh death rejection so death rejection happens most of the times is actually because of uh in a scope your research does not fit the journal uh, i use this analogy in autofocus group <laughs> I, I i i say that uh Assuming uh, the journal is uh, the journal is KFC. Assuming uh, the journal is KFC. Yeah? So now we go to the KFC. KFC people ask you, oh, uh, welcome to KFC. Uh, dine in go or take away? Uh, you say, dine in, uh, dine in. Yeah? Then what is your order? Then you say, um, I want to order a happy meal. Uh, KFC people will look at you. Uh, they pandang you. Yeah, uh, what are you try <laughs> you find you can so so so, so it is it, it, that that you know funny analogy but i hope you you get the meaning you do not go to the journal and submit another aim in school or another topic it does not work that way yeah? that straight away cannot reject understand the journal that you are targeting what is the aim in school what are what is the research that they are looking uh, at uh, is there any research gap that they are actually focusing most of the website they will tell you that they will tell you that so all this information dear bukan hidden here yeah, is actually available you just need some time to actually uh, read it and also find that so once you actually know that in scope another one which is the formatting uh amuro abstract is unique amuro using this what we call structured abstract where you find purpose methodology um you know originality and value um, and, and so and so so structure abstract if your manuscript if one big paragraph one big paragraph and you submit to MRO, minta maaf kena reject straight away will reject it, it does not you know care whether your content is very good or things like that but because your format itself is wrong they are not able to accept it and most of the editor they are also lazy to read mereka pun malas nak baca sebab format dah lain dah it just shows that you are not ready to publish in their journal it just shows that 
you do not even care what their journal is. You just want to publish. Editor tak suka. So, so, so if you see the format is wrong, most editor pun malas nak layan you. Straight away, uh, reject. Straight away, reject. So why it happens, 60, 70% or 80% is mainly this particular two reason. Yes, there are also other reasons, but those are reasonable. Lah. But main, most of most reason, which is aim and scope and also formatting. Formatting wrong, minta maaf, terus reject. So over here, I just want to let you know that please include the cover letter. Explain in the cover letter why your research is important to the journal. Just half a page will do or one Microsoft Word. Uh, your, uh, your, your research actually, you know, fit into the journal in and scope, fit to the research gap you are looking forward to. You know, please consider our research. Definitely uh, my, my, my article can uh, able to you know, reach out to many readership and, and so and so. So it's, some, it's a cover letter for you to sell uh, your, 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 your manuscript to the editor. You cannot do that on the manuscript. You need to find another way to do that. If you can email, that is the best. Tetapi sebab most of the editor pun tak nak baca email ataupun tak nak <laughs> reply your email. So include a cover letter, attach that when you submit together. That is the best way for the editor to know you, to understand you, to you know give you a second chance before they reject you. Right. So basically that. So so time is up. I do not want to spend you know uh, uh, any other minutes more. You can have my slides. This is all about the you know um over that. I also covered some on special issues. Uh, how can you actually you know uh, submit uh, special issues? How can you even um uh, create uh, your own special issues? If you have um you know interest on books, let me know. If you have interest on teaching cases, you know you can also let me know. We are currently having a competition which is called the Amoro Asia uh, case writing competition. Uh, open to Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, and Thailand. Five hundred uh, five hundred plus three hundred uh, pounds uh, to win. Uh, six prizes, I thought that six or eight uh, prizes over here. Closing time will be on 31st December this year. It will be published in EMCS, Emerging Market Case Study, which is a Scopus Index uh, case journal, right? So why write, uh, why teach, and, and so on. So publication ethics uh, on plagiarism, copyright, and ethics issues. Um, you may also find me at my email and my um, corporate phone number over right here. With that, uh, thank you so much. Uh, my apology, I've taken uh, extra time over here. I would apologize. Uh, I will stop sharing right now. I'll pass the floor back to uh, Puan Munira. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. William, for the uh, sharing. So we're open up for question and uh, any participants. If you have any questions, you may check in the chat box or you can unmute your mic and directly uh, give your questions to Mr. William. Okay, any questions? So, Mr. Williams, uh, you, you will try to see this uh, question from Dr. Beatrice, if, if you can consider Dr. Handling to be the ambassador of Emerald. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Beatrice, for the uh, suggestions. Thank you <laughs> for the nomination. nomination. <laughs> okay, so I think that's all. There's no questions from the participants. Um, so, any last words you want to give to the participant, Mr. William? Uh, last word. Uh, no, I just want to say, you know, thank you uh, for all the joining and, you know, thank you to the committee for organizing. Great job, everyone. Great job. I just hope, uh, I just want to bid uh, good luck to all, uh, to your career uh, and also your publication journey. Uh, please do not, do not WhatsApp me uh, to find, uh, to, to publish in journal. It's about in Emerald, there is no uh, uh, journal of William. Uh, belum ada lagi. 
I tak boleh accept, I tak boleh accept a manuscript. So I just, I just hope you know, uh, uh, all, 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 all the, uh, all the best, uh, all the best, and good luck to you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you again, Mr. William. So, can we get a photo sessions with all the participants? You may open up your camera, and we'll take a photo group. All right, in a count of three, one, two, three. Okay, next, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Last one, say cheese. One, two, three. I know everyone of you are already hungry, so it's time for lunch now. And thank you again for your participations in this webinar. And you haven't filling up your attendance, you may do so. Uh, the link is provided in the chat box. And once again, thanks all for stick until the end of this webinar. Thank you all for joining this uh, webinar. We'll hope to see you again in the next uh, program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Thank you very much. Jumpa lagi. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Happy lunchtime.